Hello everyone and welcome to the bonus episode of Conversation Street, which is going to be the awards. Hooray! Yay, which, award, which awards, Gemma? The 2021 ones. Yes, the Conversation Street Awards 2021. This is our 10th Conversation Street Awards. Amazing. The ninth one that we've had people voting for because we did just decide it all ourselves. It was a total dictatorship the first year. But nevertheless, this is the 10th Conversation Street Awards and I think that's a pretty cool achievement, don't you? Yes, I don't agree with fascism unless I'm in charge. Well, that's why we changed it, you see. Yeah, but I was in charge before. Oh, yeah, 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 totally, totally. Thank you, everybody, for voting. I know it's been a while you've been waiting for the results of this, but um, I'm finally here with them, and it's been uh, really cool to see what people have been voting for. When did we have a look? It was like Boxing Day, I think. We had that special was, treat. That was the first time we had a look to see where people were voting. It was so cool going, ooh, what percentage have they got? Some people have got really, really close as well. This Not only is this the 10th one, which I think this is quite, quite cool, as I said before. This is also the awards where the most people have voted for, isn't it? Yes, we have had so many people voting. Thank you all so much for exercising your democratic rights over the yes, awards. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> the last time, um, our last winner in terms of number of votes was in 2017, but 2021 mm -hmm. smashed it. And some of the um, categories have been uh, like very, very, very close. They're like half a percent between the winner and second Crazy. place as well. So it was, oh, I can't wait to be able to share who it is, which I, I think we'll, we'll do now, won't we? Do you, Probably. Do you, should, should we get on with it? Yes. Let's, let's get on with it and do our first <laughs> award. So our first award for this evening is the AOP Award, which is where we award the, the best newcomer of the year. Um, I don't think there's been as many newcomers in Com Coronation Street this past year, have there? I don't know whether they're, uh, they're trying to reduce the cast um, but the coming is, in because of COVID or what have no, you. No, I but... reckon it's... Uh, well, I don't know. I think we've we've got enough for nominees and they were all characters that have had significant parts. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We, we, weren't, um, we weren't wanting for people to uh, to get on the list. Who were our nominees, Gemma? Would you like to, like to We say? had Phil. Yes. We had Ronnie. Yes. We had Harvey. Yeah. Curtis. Yeah. And Daisy. Interesting how you decided to read them out in a different order to the order that we had them on the notes, though. I think it's probably a good idea to do it in that order. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. We can do it whatever order we want, just to keep people guessing for a little bit longer. Now, Daisy there, of course, didn't debut in uh, 2021. She was snuck in there at the end of 2020, but she didn't get on our uh, nomination list for last year's awards because she'd only been in, like, one or two episodes when the nominations went out. But has she won? We'll have to find out. Gemma, would yes. you like to announce... <laughs> the first award of the evening. The winner of the Conversation Street Award 2021 for AOP Best New Character is... Daisy! Daisy Midgley! Oh, look at that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Good good job, Daisy. Yeah. Well done. So, um, yeah. She kind of, she came into the show a little bit like Alexis from um, Schitt's Creek, didn't she? Where she comes in with like a rich boyfriend. Oh, yeah. And she's kind of a bit spoiled and she, she just kind of uses people. But... Then she slowly grew a heart. <laughs> she did. It, it took a while to find it, for sure. Because, the, yeah, the first episode she came in, she, I, I thought she made a great first episode, actually, because she yes, came she in when Jenny and Johnny were having an argument about the... Um, the Johnny being involved in that warehouse robbery thing. And um, J Daisy, Daisy, who had despite being very, very close to Jenny, obviously, had never been mentioned up until about a week beforehand. They were, they were absolutely <laughs> very so incredibly close. So close. close. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, she came in in the middle of that and she was just like loving all the drama of it and listening at doors and things. I think Lee just wanted to get away from there. But that certainly um, is, you know, Daisy's character has stayed it's true to that, hasn't she? Always looking for a bit of drama and a bit of gossip and trying to get rid of Johnny as well, which is basically what she spent her first couple of months on Coronation Street doing this past year. If only she had known she just had to dig a bit more into the sinkhole. Yes, exactly. She could have helped out. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe she's partly behind this. Maybe we're going to... Maybe that's going to be the twist for 2022. Leo's going to finally get some work done there and... Uh, He's going to say, hang on a minute, there's some sort of false eyelashes <laughs> down there. I can exactly. smell Double Glammy's signature perfume scent. Oh yeah, Double Glammy, she was involved in that as well, wasn't she, this year? she um, That was that was an odd storyline. Um, and, and I think when lots of people think back to the beginning of the year, they think about um, Sean being the main one uh, around that. It was Sean and Gemma, wasn't it, getting involved? But um, it certainly was good for Jenny, uh, for Daisy's ruthless, money-hungry side, because it got uh, basically gave her a chance. I don't think to she's ruthless fleece. and money-hungry. I think she's just ambitious. She's a gold digger. Even Jenny says so. Um, well, th that complaint has been levelled against Jenny herself, so I don't know why she thinks 
That's a nice thing to say about anybody. <laughs> Just I because know. they're both good looking of... and they can wrap men around their little fingers, it's not their fault, okay? <laughs> Daisy was just like, I don't care whether people lose money. <laughs> they're all a bunch of chumps. I don't, don't mind. Was she just... was. <laughs> quite, quite charming. A bit mean. A bit little bit. Because she, she, she even got that um, Carol involved, didn't she? Which was Sean's homeless friend. I she know. had a little bit of a comeback from homeless Carol. Yeah, not great. <laughs> not great. Not, not a nice thing to do, really, is it? No. But, you know, sometimes um, we like people who are naughty as well as good. Yes, yes. She wasn't ha- on the top of Father Christmas's list this year. I don't know what she got for Christmas, but I don't think Father Christmas brought any of it. Not Daniel. I'll tell you that. No. Um, so speaking of romance, um, the, the, the other big thing for Daisy, uh, got midway through the year, I suppose, was when she found out that Ronnie had slept with uh, Jenny. And vice versa. And, vi- and vice versa. They both did do it to each other, that's true. Um, <laughs> and um, Jenny tries to tries to fling her out uh, after kind of getting it. Fling her out? Fling her out the Rovers. But, but this, this is after that, this is when Daisy kind of starts to open up a little bit and talks about um, oh, when she was younger, after Tom died, her little brother, her dad sidelined her. And I think those things like that were crucial in um, some Coronation Street viewers warming to the character and realising that she's not just a, a one-sided bitch. Yeah, I have bitch. to say that um, Daisy had a very comprehensive victory in this category, didn't she? She did, she yeah. did. Yeah, lot, lots, yeah, I think she's uh, definitely won the hearts of, uh, of many Coronation Street viewers, absolutely. She's a great new character. She's yeah. got a lot of depth to her. She's got a backstory. Yeah. She's got, she's involved with a character that's a quite likeable, popular character in Jenny. Oh yeah, yeah, she's, definitely. She's uh, ensconced in the Rovers, which is the heart of the show should be mm. and also got her finger in the Barlow pies as well hasn't she yeah. and if you're gonna I think she that, that's maybe part of our ruthless side as well forget the house that Daniel's um, inherited from his mum Daisy just wants to be in the number one family of the street yep that's right <laughs> yeah watch out Platts if the Daisy Barlow changes. to be maybe maybe she could seduce David and be Daisy Platt well she, she nearly did this is what um, Christmas uh, 2020 she, she uh, was having a bit of a chat up uh, sesh with David and Shona was getting a bit jealous but I uh, didn't go anywhere with that. It was just her and Daniel and Ryan, of course, who um, in another um, not not so um, uh, good she move. She didn't cover herself with glory, did she? She, she, uh, she seduced Ryan and got him drunk and yeah. then seduced him to this bed, was, but she didn't do anything. This was apparently. probably the darkest turn the character has had in it. This it was. It was a, a bit, lot of controversy. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of... Um, yeah, bad, bad idea. You can't really redeem a character that does that. These days, back in the day, it would have been a funny joke. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. But um, I think, yeah, she's she's got away with that, hasn't she? Because she said that nothing happened. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, she's uh, since moving on to Daniel, we've seen her her softer side. She she did get upset when he made a joke about her being all vacuous and only caring about the social media image and everything. And um, obviously we had the nice speech that she gave at the Christmas market the other week about how awesome Daniel is. And she left Ashley at the party because he was too um, empty-headed for her, I suppose. She has got brains in her, hasn't she? That's. Uh... I think the main reason she left him was because he told her not to get drunk. And she was like, there's free alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you expect me to do? I really liked the the how worried she got about Bertie and. Oh yeah, there was, about... that was that. Yeah, that was the other thing, wasn't it? When he, when he nearly swallowed the battery. And she was talking about um, she did the child's first aid course and things yes. with, because of her brother. I wonder if anything's going to come from that. I'm I'm really really interested to see what's going to happen with Daisy in the new year. Actually, um, now now that we, she has become um, a little more more, uh, she's been given a bit more depth the, as a character. Um, I, I look forward to when she comes on screen and uh, and like you said at the, the heart of the show in the Rovers I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty more of her well she's a year. very compelling actress isn't she she has got a lot of charisma mm. and she's a good presence and it also um, it's great because she's come in and she's playing against Sally Ann Matthews who's you know a very established character in the show very great actress and she's holding her own isn't she in the scenes oh yeah She's, um, yeah, it must be easy to be intimidated by, uh, if you're a Coronation Street fan and you get a job on the street, we've heard people talking about this, coming in and like playing with it scenes with these like establishment actors who've been playing the same character mm. for like 40 years, it must be so intimidating. I know, I know. 
Anyway. And then she's, she's doing an awesome job. Yeah, and, she's uh, fantastic. And it, it looks like we will be seeing her for a, a while to come because I think, I think um, according to our articles that I read, she had sort of very short contracts at the beginning. Like um, back in May, her contract was extended, but only till September this year, or last year, sorry. Uh, and now I don't know I don't know how long she's uh, she's in the show for, but uh, it looks like they were testing her out, and they were they were happy with what they what they saw on screen, and they 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 weren't sure as well. Again, according to this interview that I read, that whether they were gonna how far down the villainous route they were going to take her. Um, and at the beginning of her time on the show, Charlotte said um, Charlotte Jordan, who plays uh, Daisy, said that um, she portrayed her both humane and totally psychotic. But instead, she enjoyed playing the mischief maker. It sounds a bit like me. That's how I would <laughs> describe myself. Yes, I'll do that. me <laughs> too. Humane and totally me psychotic. Too. Well, Ian McLeod has said about her: Daisy might seem like sweetness and light at first, but she can be a maelstrom of minxy mischief when her mood takes her. She revels in devilment and can be very self-serving, but she's fiercely loyal to those she cares about. Although her loyalties can change in a heartbeat, and uh, I, that I think does that does sound like that, me as well. <laughs> 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 that, that was a bit of a Hilda Ogden laugh you go sorry yeah <laughs> that, uh, I, th- I think that he said that towards the beginning and I would say that definitely um, that's been the route that she's gone down she's a great sure. she's a great character she's really her. interesting and she is um, fun to watch so I'm really pleased that she's won the award me too now we do have an acceptance speech from Charlotte today I got in touch with um, with some of the uh, some of the winners of the yeah, Conversation Street right. Awards a few days ago and we haven't got something from everybody not everybody I've even been able to contact but we got a few uh, today so um, without further ado here's Charlotte and what she has to say about the award hello Conversation Street podcast it's Charlotte Jordan here and I was told that you voted for me for best newcomer which is so surprising and so nice so thank you very much um i hope you've been enjoying daisy and i hope you had a lovely christmas new year um and thank you so much oh and that's my dog olive say hello being whingy and annoying but thank you again lots of love bye bye hey thank you charlotte and thank Charlotte's you. dog. <laughs> yes. You have to you have to imagine that, listeners. But you, if you go Beautiful on our social dog. media, we we will post that video yes. that came with that as well. We get to see her lovely dog, Olive. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yes, exactly. Well <laughs> exactly. Let's move on to our second award. And from hellos to goodbyes now, it's time for the Tarar Award, where we see which character who left the cobbles this year did it in the best way. Was it the saddest, most dramatic, most exciting? Or maybe it's just you voted for the one who was per- you were personally glad to see the back of. I don't know, whoever. We had five nominees in this category. So we got five nominees in all the categories. We, we do. That is a bit of a spoiler alert there. Yeah. We had um, Seb, Johnny, Natasha, Norris and Corey. And uh, Norris able to sneak in there despite not even appearing on the show this year. But he did have a nice old send-off in his funeral, didn't he? Yes. Um... Uh, any any preamble to the Tarara nope. Awards? We're just going to dive right in there and say the win. It's my turn to announce this one. So, the winner of the Conversation Street 2021 Tarara Award goes to Seb. Oh. I know. Clap, 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 clap. Congratulations, can Seb. You, can you clap? Or is it bad taste? Um, whatever. Though we had some incredibly dramatic exits. We had three people who left the show because they were killed. Yes. Didn't we? So, um... And one person died and another person left. Yeah, one of them just so, got arrested. Corey just was like, I'm off. Yeah, off to, so... Off to jail, mate. Said Johnny and Natasha. Well, did Johnny... Was Johnny killed or did he... Mm, uh, well... Well, it was a sad ending, nonetheless. It, uh, it was Seb, a death. Seb, Seb was the saddest of them all. Yeah, that's right. Because of the, it, he was involved in the hate crime storyline, which was... Probably one of Coronation Street's biggest uh, story, if not the well, biggest story. Well, uh, I, I don't think that's the last time we're going to be hearing from the hate crime story this award show. I will tell you that right now. But yeah, Seb Steph, blimey, that got a lot of people um, very upset on social media, didn't it? it? It came as a surprise as well, but um, just the way it was done, it was so bleak. Very dark. And uh, Well, it, it, the, the, I suppose one of the reasons why this might stand out in so many people's minds is because we've seen it many times that's uh, true, in that's the flashbacks true. and everything. Although he did die at hospital. I think that's, that's some people might f- uh, forget that sometimes because we obviously had the, um, the brutal first scene where he was where he was kicked and we didn't see who it was. We just saw uh, his body kind of reacting to the kicking there after the attack scene. Um, and then later on, was it in that episode or was it in the flashbacks? I get them jumbled up now where he's crawling over to Nina to say, um, 
to check that yeah. she's okay down the end of the road and he, he he gets the phone there and he's like oh my girlfriend's been attacked so he was noble to the he last because he, he, yeah, he wasn't doing selfless. so well himself actually he tells Nina he loves her um, and then then we get to see the scene where it's revealed that it's Corey doing the kicking that, that amazing slow motion uh, scene where Kelly's trying to drag him away but he kind of pushes her out of the way and kicks her and kicks him again um, we, we get to to hear his final moments when Abby um, hears the answer phone message that Seb leaves her, or his, his pre-final moments, I suppose. Um, and then um, the actual death itself, which is a really, really tragic scene where Abby gets told about it and um, just collapses on the floor because they, the, the doctor comes to her and says um, his body's shut down, his brain's not sending messages to his body anymore, nothing we can do, his heart stopped, he's died. And um, and Abby just crumbles, doesn't she? Yes. She's so sad. Sally Carmen is so so good at yeah. portraying. Just I don't know where she gets it from. The, the the deep grief at these these awful moments that the character goes through. But uh, it's it's certainly a very very memorable death, and it's gonna not not just for this year, but I think it's gonna be one that people will remember for, remember for a long time. Um, as well um, with his death you had that, that scene in the hospital room where um, Seb's lying on the bed or his, his body lying on the bed and, uh, and Abby's there kind of crying and she, she reaches out and holds his hand and that was a little cameo appearance from Harry Vizanoni's girlfriend wasn't it? Yeah. Because, they, because Sally Carmen couldn't touch his hand back then. Um, it was great that we were able to go back and revisit the scenes and and do them properly i suppose once the covid restrictions had been relaxed somewhat well even with uh the restrictions in place they did a fantastic job of making mm. that initial scene very powerful and um it had it, the other thing is it it has resonated with a lot of people as well because it's based on a true story the murder of sophie lancaster and um as well as that people having personal experiences with being harassed on the streets or attacked. Mm. And so it um, unfortunately uh, had a, a deeper meaning. I think a lot, lot of people, people could really identify with the idea of you know, being somewhere you shouldn't be or maybe being, not, being somewhere yeah. outside where, no, not where you shouldn't be, where you feel unsafe, should yes, I that's say. Right. And uh, having and people following you people. or feeling yeah. like people are following you even if they aren't. And uh, but yeah, this it was a a so so well done scene, and um, we 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 didn't know at the time either. You know, w would both of them die? Either of them die? That's None right, of them yeah. die. Yeah, um, it was a it was a left for a f yeah, you know for us to discover um, as time yeah. went on. Fantastic scene, but I mean, props to the other ones this year as well because I mean Johnny's final moments were brilliantly done that that was that was a fantastic scene and uh natasha's death was quite um quite dramatic as well wasn't it dressed up as morticia where she gets shot there and um yeah Nor norris's funeral also um <laughs> had its silly parts but also it's um it's it's sad parts as well so um oh so sad so sad but um congratulations seb you died the best shall <laughs> we uh, should we move on to the next award now it's time for the top last Category for best female character. Yes, character. Characteress. I don't. I mean, I think sometimes people vote for the actress as well as the character, but I, we we try to keep our awards character based, don't we? But, yeah, we do. Know, yeah, we you do. You can vote for whatever you want, really. Yeah. Can't so... vote for any men in this one, though, can you? Because this is about top feisty females of the street who are fighting it out to the death in the top last category. That's didn't, right. Didn't say that. We've got to kill off all the other ones now, haven't we? Who um, who, who are our, our nominees this time, Gemma? We've got Jenny, Nina, Abby, Leanne and Fizz. I think a very strong category this oh, year. Absolutely. Always the but top lass is there. Holly it's just, Holly, very hard to, to whittle it down to five really? nominees. It always is, but definitely this year. But I think all of these five deserve it for um, the parts they've played and the stories that have been given to them this year. So the top lass of 2021 is Abby. 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 Now this was Abby Webster, Abby so, Franklin. so close. Yeah between Nina and Abby. Yeah, mega, mega close this time, but Abby just about pipped it. And, uh, and I'm glad, actually, because I, I, I love both of these characters. Me too. But, um, yeah, I, I'm really, really chuffed that Abby won this one because I, I think, if I think back to 2021 myself, Abby is, <laughs> has really been, been a constant presence, hasn't she? Well, and, in uh, many Which is brilliant ways, for me because she's one of my favourites. I mean, we often, um, in, well, in the past, have nominated 
and had a win a villain in the top mm-hmm. last all top lad categories so it's not just down to who do you like the best although usually the villains are the ones we like the best but um you know who's made the biggest impact in the show who is the one on everyone's lips who's ev- who's the person everybody's talking about and abby yeah. definitely wins this award because she can be a bit of a divisive character well she could be a bit of a villain herself exactly she? yeah <laughs> um, she's certainly not all um you know sweetness and light perfection is she she's not and she's a also good had quite a few vendettas this year hasn't she first of all ray Yes, that, 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 I can't believe that that was back in 2021, but it was, wasn't it? Right at the beginning of the year, that amazing scene well, where she's hiding out in the in the uh, hotel, uh, capturing the video of him talking to the council women and that face that she pulls when she realises she's got the evidence that she needs to be able to stop him from demolishing the let's street. Let's just quickly like sum up what she's done this year. She's She's gone up against an evil businessman gangster. She's got married. She rescued people from a freezer. <laughs> Her son was murdered. She had to go to a court case um, involving finding out who it was that killed her son. Fallen into a sinkhole. She's fallen into a sinkhole. She tried to kill somebody. She had to shagging about. <laughs> she um, she might be pregnant. And well, that's where it was she's left, been it? Yeah. harassing a teenage girl. She's certainly been very, very weeks. busy. Yeah, that that thing that you said earlier about her rescuing uh, Kevin and Debbie from the freezer that's definitely leaned into Abby being a hero, which has been uh, kind of her shtick, hasn't it, for the past few years? It's almost a bit of a. I think it's kind of a comic joke now, um, to to me anyway, because um, she's such a petite little um, lady, isn't she? Mm. She's very very tiny and petite and sweet looking but actually she's the scariest woman on the street and she's like an action star she's like vaulting over things but breaking doors down rescuing people from fires she, a year hot can't or go cold by. she'll rescue you from it exactly a year can't go by without um abby rescuing someone and this year it was kevin and debbie yes i loved um i loved the, the, the comedy of abby like uh, as well as that she she can do she's an actress that can do both very really, very really versatile well. yeah the uh, the wedding dress trying on scene was one that stands out to me from the beginning of the year where she's there in a big big uh, doc martens wasn't she with a with a wedding dress that was totally unsuitable for her and she's like I, I don't want any of this so that was a great scene with her and uh and and debbie that was a lot of fun but um, obviously, the the biggest, the, the the hardest work I suppose she's had to do this year was the all the come back, uh, all the um, all the reaction from Seb's death. And like I said earlier, the scene where she finds out that he's died was amazing. Um, the the vendetta that she had against Corey afterwards, going after him with a bottle, going after him with a gun in the sinkhole scene as well. That scene where she talks to I can't remember who she's telling. Is it Kevin? About how she fantasizes about killing Corey. That was fantastic. Yep, yep. So so yep. good. Um, oh, and the witness statement scene as well. There were so many scenes this year when we, we reflected on these a bit on our Patreon episode last week, didn't we? Um, that the where Abby was at the center of, but that one where she's. She's written this witness uh, statement to, to read out in the court and Brian reads it back to her. And that was Brian's best scene of, you know, forever possibly, at least in a, a long time, but um, where he just very soberly read out the, the the pain and suffering that she's been going through since Kev, uh, since Seb was killed. Um, I just love Abby. She's so sparky. Even when she's, you know, in the pits of despair and sadness, like... And who else would you be able to listen? Like, um, the way she said to Kevin about how she wanted to get revenge and what she was going to do to the people that killed Seb. And she's so utterly convincing. Mm. Like, um, Sally Carmen, fantastic portrayal of that character. Um, and also really well written, too, because I believe that she would do that. Like, yeah. imagine somebody, say, say like, Maria. Imagine Maria saying that. You'd be like, no way, Maria. <laughs> you wish. But... You believe that Abby would like you can just imagine her crawling through someone's window with a knife in her teeth, <laughs> yes. can't you? <laughs> but then also accidentally knocking a candle over, burning the house down, and rescuing them <laughs> and I mean, their dog. I, I, I've I've spoken recently on the podcast about sometimes finding it difficult to to love Abby because some of the choices that she makes aren't necessarily the most uh, most morally upstanding ones. She's but not. Uh, She's definitely got a shade of grey, she, doesn't she? She does, but um, she, she's always able to win me back again. I mean, we had just recently that scene with her at the drug support group where she opens up about the tough life she's had and um, what, what made her turn to drugs and everything. And it was so, so brilliantly performed. I it know. is really interesting. Her background gives her a lot of depth. 
And also, I know that some people have been up- upset with her for her um, reaction to Kelly moving on on the street. But we most recently saw her having a truce, didn't we? Yes. With, with Kelly. So cool, maybe that cool might... Um, yeah, they're just fine. She, they're she's just, got a pregnancy drama, not, so she can only have so like, many dramas at once. Kelly, I'm she? sorry, I've got to move on from this story. God, I can't believe they gave her to have a one, as a one night stand and then ran. Time oh, yeah. will tell whether that was a good decision from... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to say what I think about that now, apart from to say I think it's quite a good, clever idea, <laughs> even though it's a well done, well worn trope, isn't it? Yes. But um, I think fantastic character. I really enjoy her. It's no secret that I I love Abby, and also um, just to add in, we're not the only ones. Not the only one who's been awarding um, Abby slash Sally for her great work. Yeah, no, no, she got um, a TV Choice Award this year for. Um, for Best Soap Actress, and um, at the RTS Awards as well, she got Best Dramatic Performance. So, she really is so, fantastic. Well done, Sally Carmen. Here's, here's another one for your virtual mantelpiece, because um, we should print, there's we should no get, award for this. I know what we should do. We should buy a 3D printer. Oh, yeah, we could, couldn't and we? Could do, we could print out the little um, Hilda Ogden <laughs> Right Laugh Award and stuff. That would be really fun. Yeah, the who's Deirdre. got... Deirdre's on the top last award. Who's got a 3D image of Hilda Ogden we can use? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, well, I mean, we, they, they can print out the little graphic, can't they? And frame it if they truly appreciate it. Oh, that's true. They can do that, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Now, we have got a speech, haven't we, from uh, some Sally Carmen. We got in touch with her last week. Maybe and, we should uh, do certificates. We could, we could yeah. do certificates. Sorry, anyway. Anymore. Yeah, that's right. Sally, Sally Carmen, Carmen. Um, was very kind Only to Only Sally Carmen, the one who plays Abby. She does, she does. Yes. She, she, she's quite pleased to get this award, another one. So um, she, she, she sent us a little message to say thank you. Here it is. Wow, thank you so much for <laughs> voting me top lass. Um, couldn't be happier. Absolutely delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, although you've all had your Christmases. So I hope they were good. Um, and here's to a fabulous New Year and lots more Corrie. Um, thank you. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. We've enjoyed watching you an Aww. awful lot this year. So thank you very much for sending that in. And um, also thank what... you to all the other um, characters and actors who were in that category. Yes, and, and all categories. Of course. It's <laughs> not to be nominated. Yes, yes, it is, isn't it? Why are we saying this? Nobody's nominated us. Well, I'm just right. telling, I'm telling them. <laughs> it is a bloody nom- honour to be nominated. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next award. It's time for the boys, Gemma, we've had the girls. It is the Top Lad Award now, which has, um, for, for many years, been held by uh, by David Platt, hasn't it? He, he's had it quite a few years in a row, but he wasn't even nominated this year because no. he, he hadn't had a whole lot to do. But we did have five other very deserving nominees in this category, which were uh, Dev, Roy, Tyrone, Sam and Imran, all characters that we absolutely love to watch. And uh, like, the, like the top uh, last category, actually, it was probably quite difficult for many people to, to vote in. But vote you must, and did, hopefully. So um, let's find out who the winner is. Is it me announcing this one, or is it you? I've lost yeah, track. Yeah. Is it my turn? Okay. The Conversation Street 2021 Award for Top Lad, Best Male Character, goes to Roy! Roy! Roy, hooray. Congratulations, Where's he gone? Oh, he's Roy. back. He's, yeah, he went to Peru for a little bit this year, but he's, he's back just to claim his award. Oh, we don't have a speech from David Nielsen, That's by the strange. way. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because he's like, sorry guys, I'm just tired of winning. He doesn't do social media. I, I know he is, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, this isn't the first award he's won. It's obviously the most important award he's won this year. But um, he did get the Best Soap Actor at the TV Choice Awards earlier this year. We can just read out his acceptance speech for that and pretend it was for this one. (laughs) I'm going to put my award on my mantle. No, where did he put it? He put it on the counter in Roy's uh, Roy's role, didn't he? (laughs) Everyone can be inspired and do a better job. I love him. He's fantastic. He's so, so funny. He's very different from Roy. I would love to meet him in real life, David Nielsen. He seems like such a fun person. But yeah. um, yeah, Roy... Um, amazing turnaround for this character because it certainly felt for a little while after Haley left that the character was a bit directionless. But I think um, definitely well, um, was flailing for you know a place. Mm. But reintroducing well, introducing his extended family first with uh, with Richard and uh, it was Richard, wasn't it? The, the, the brother. The, the brother. Yeah, and, it and could have all gone so horribly wrong. Really, really it? could. And uh, the, the, the actor that Do played him, Richard, was amazing. But then Molly Gallagher oh, yeah. has just uh, she's been fantastic. fantastic Do you remember? Do you remember that um series? Do you remember there was a series uh, of, and uh, sorry, a season 
of Married with Children when they introduced a new child to the family. Do you remember that? No, or am I, I imagining it? And they just got rid of them because it didn't work. Is that a bit of a poochie moment? Or the, <laughs> yeah, the, this poochie. Could, Molly could have been, sorry, Nina could have been the poochie of Coronation Street. <laughs> but but actually, no. No, she has gone and done a brilliant job. We're not talking about Nina, we're talking about No, well, we're Roy. talking about Roy. Yeah, who, um, who he was, like Abby, started off the year wanting to help out with the... Um, Getting uh, stopping Ray from demolishing the street, and um, he he had this great scene where he was at the council meeting and he talked about um, tearing the heart out of the community with no anaesthetic. Well, he always gets the best speeches, doesn't he? He's him, him and Ken. They do a good monologue. I tell oh, you. Oh, they that. do. Um, he was also there was a bit where he warned Peter about maybe losing Carla with all this reckless drinking, but obviously he's mostly been tied up this year in the Seb and Nina storyline. And um, more brilliant speeches. Uh, there were particularly a couple where um, Nina was unconscious in the hospital bed, and um, th- this was after Kevin's stag do because that was th- I think it was on the stag do and hen night um, episodes where it all kicked off, wasn't it? Do you remember um, in Kevin's stag do and they all had Kevin mustaches and even Roy had one yeah. himself, which is brilliant. But anyway, he um, he he talks to Nina and uh, when she's in, unconscious and he says that oh, was really sad. The I... bit where they give him the bag of her uh, jewelry. Oh gosh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. They did. Didn't they? Was, they, they gave um, him all the um, all the piercings and everything, didn't they? It was really, it was really fascinating because that that storyline showed uh, the different reactions that Abby and Roy had to their, you know, beloved relative being in hospital, mm. and how differently they both reacted to it. Both very honest and, um, but totally diverse reactions you know Roy was very stoic and quiet but you felt just as bad for him and you could tell he was struggling just as much Mm. but he didn't you know like um, Abby wasn't you know screaming around yeah and he also when she when she degoths herself he he keeps hold of her clothes doesn't he because he knows that that's part of her identity see Roy is a very subtle person isn't he there's um, and and David Nielsen plays it so beautifully that he doesn't need a lot to say mm. you know a great deal you know no. just a look or you know when he's kind of when he does that thing where he kind of frowns and looks away and you know it, oh. it looks so effortless <laughs> it really does i'm sure it's not <laughs> he, he, he i'm sure he he worked very hard on it but i um, mean he just comes across so brilliantly and and like i said his his, his speech is the best he went when he was unconscious he was talking about um if he after Haley died, he preferred his own company, but um, he still has acquired a number of house guests over the years who's left him because he's never had any family to stick by him. But um, now he's got her, and he's proud of her, and mm, even yeah. even when she calls him Roymond, which I don't think we've ever actually seen her call him since she woken up. I don't know about that. But it was really funny. But yeah, but he said, "Oh, I'd I'd love you to to wake up and and call it me now," and she did, and all and everything. That um, he he's just been so so supportive of her all year. There was another great scene where um, I think just before she removes her makeup, where he finds her sitting down on the curb, and she um, she talks about everybody being against her and the attack being her fault because she they were attacking her because of her identity, and uh, and she does this great line about we are the freaks, Roy. People are all against us. Um, it was it was fantastic, and then obviously he has been a hero this year. Um, saving Abby from the sinkhole and Corey as well. Who with that with that super powered bag? Who rescues the rescuers? Roy. Roy does. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. Um, and he then had a a bit of a crisis, didn't he? Um, because he had done something immoral to yes. save Abby by lying. Mm. Um, now I think this is a bit of a character development, isn't it? Because we know in the past Roy has got himself in serious trouble mm. with telling his truth to people and they don't always want to hear it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking of something we saw a couple of months ago when we were watching the old uh, early 2000s, late 90s you episodes. I can't of remember the same when, thing. when he tells Hayley that... Yes. She, well, I can't remember what he says. Like, I don't see you as a real woman or, or no, something along No, I don't think... Of, yeah, lines. and it was just so devastating to Hayley. And he just says what he feels. And he was just... You know, he his policy has always been the truth is the most important thing no matter who you hurt. Mm. But I think Roy now would understand number one he wouldn't think of Haley as not a woman no. anymore because everybody accepts Haley as a woman because that's who she is but also I don't think that he would now tell her 
I think you think a bit harder, don't you? I think so. I think, I think, I think so. we, and it's very unusual, really, for us to see big character developments for established people like Roy. Can you imagine, mm. you know, something like this happening with Ken, where he fundamentally shifts his view on, on maybe, sort maybe of he something. finds religion. Maybe Ken <laughs> suddenly decides to be a massive Tory. He did go veggie, didn't he? That about ten years ago. That I don't was a think bit of a shift for him. No, because he already like no. I think he's. <laughs> I think he likes to be virtuous, doesn't he? Because remember that time he nearly he killed his own children by because he was smoking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he's never smoked a cigarette <laughs> since. Um, yeah. So with, with uh, I forgot what I was going to say there. Oh, well, so, principles. Yeah, there, and, there's and, what, there's one thing about telling a little white lie to your spouse. And then actually lying for the in front of the police, which is what Roy did. But he did it to protect Nina and Abby. But he couldn't those... live with himself. No, so he so he went off to Peru. Well, I think it was it was not just the lie; it was also the fact that he thinks that the lie inadvertently led to um, yes. Natasha's death as well, and, and so he blames himself for that. Although since he's coming back from Peru, he did that. Quite, yet he hasn't seemed too bothered about it, I'm sure. Came, no, he came back from Peru because he was on the he was on the digital spy forums and looking on Reddit and stuff, and he's like, eh, everyone blames Abby for that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm in the clear. <laughs> oh, brilliant! I'll come back then. It's rubbish. Because that that was a bit of a, a bit of a worry for some viewers earlier this month, or no, last month, wasn't it? When when he left, because um, it was played almost like he'd left the show for good. But I think we all knew that a, a back of a taxi exit wasn't going to quite cut it for Roy. Um, but Not they, our Roymond. But, <laughs> but Corey and David Nilsson actually did like to um, uh, keep us guessing. They definitely... He, he did a little interview around the time saying, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm 72. Um, when Corey aired Norris's... Misdirected yeah, everybody. When Corey aired Norris's funeral, we had a scene with the hearse pulling up. And because of Malcolm Hebden, I thought, I'm really sorry I won't get to work with him again. But there are two exits for me, one for the character and one for David. Hopefully they won't coincide, maybe they will. I know Roy leaving will get a reaction. It's a big part of your life and a big part of the popular culture. He will be remembered for a long while. So it's it's kind of not... That was just really... <laughs> that was really like... Yeah. Really, because we... When, we, not, when he not... left, I think we were both going, he'll be back. And then we read this and we're like, hang on a minute, this is quite... But even with this, it's not exactly... It is, it's not completely saying yeah, maybe no I know exactly there, but... it's, it's full of plausible deniability it's why I yeah. like it it's fantastic yeah, but he is here to stay and um, so for a bit yeah and hope, I mean hopefully he'll be able to have a bit of a rest in 2022 as well because he's played such a big part but not too much for a rest because we all love him don't we well ex- well the only permanent thing about Coronation Street is the cobbles yes and so, Ken I wasn't going to say that <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> So, um, congratulations, congratulations, Roy. Roymond, you have won. Um, really fantastic. I'm glad that, um, you know, even the older characters but get given really fantastic storylines. Um, what, what a brilliant idea. Whose idea was it to bring Nina in? And Molly Gallagher also. She's so great with Roy. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're a really yeah. brilliant, really brilliant character. And, and who'd have thought that he could be... You know, some some, some characters are blessed to be given a partnership that worked really, really well, but to get two, like and, Roy's got with yeah. Nina. And it makes it look, like you said, effortless. You know, everything that Roy just does... Roy is one of those characters that feels like a real person has just wandered onto the set and doesn't know that everyone's watching them, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. absolutely. Right, um, from the old to the young, let's move on to our next award. <laughs> Now it's time for our the R Kid Award for the best young character. Yes. And we have the nominees are Sam, Jack, Hope, Max, and Kelly. Ah, Kelly. Right now, just explain the um, the criteria. We pick. Well, it, th- th- this is a difficult one because twenty twenty one was this is when the kids were being put in the forefront of the show more so than ever weren't they I think this time last year Ian McLeod was saying well we're going to get the young uns the teens are going to give them a major story and I think back at earlier on when he was saying that we didn't know exactly what that story would be but certainly we've seen an awful lot more of the teenage characters though not necessarily all of these because well not all of these are teenagers for one thing but we've also seen an awful lot of um, of Asher and Ardy um, Summer as well um Corey, of course, and, uh, and and Amy, but we, we've not been able to include them in the nominations for this because the actors themselves aren't kids anymore, are they? They're a little yeah, bit older we prefer, than 18, some of we, them. We kind of, yeah, keep the this category for the under-18s. Yes, exactly. Who are the actors who are under-18s. So the characters, some of them, 
are the same age as Kelly, but the actors are older. Yes, so yeah, that's, quite. That's our, you have to draw a line somewhere, and that's where we've drawn our line. So yeah, exactly. I will tell you now, the winner of the Arkid Award for 2021 is... Sam! Hey, Sam what a landslide. And it was a bit of a landslide for him as well. Yep. Awfully high percentage of the uh, the votes did our Sam get. So congratulations, mister. Last year he won our um, A Up Award for the Best Newcomer. And this year he is uh, there for Best Kid. And I think, I mean, it's gonna he's going to be a tough one to shake, isn't he? I think well, he might he's... be getting it for a few years it's, to come. I think as long as he's in the show, he's going to be nominated for our kid. And I... At the moment, I can't see there's very much competition because Sam is such a great character yeah. and he is very beloved of the viewers and mm. they're also good at writing for him because he is... I would say he's got the most unique personality of a child character since Chesney. Yeah, he's definitely one of those characters that are, are, are particularly memorable. So, so Chesney so, and Simon, both when they were young, really captured say, people's attention. Simon definitely was very popular when he was younger because he was cute mm. and he was helpless and vulnerable. But I wouldn't say that he had a distinctive personality. No, no. But maybe Chesney a... definitely did because he, you know, he had his quirks and so the same I would say with Sam. Yeah, and, and, and Chesney had his um his tragic backstory as well, well with all his of these awful mum and everything. Sad, so sad Simon stories. came in after his mum died, didn't he? Yeah, but... and now we've got Sam who's now a half an orphan. Yes, he is. Yeah, thank goodness he's got Nick, eh? Um, I think we should call them Norphans because it's no, <laughs> not an orphan, but kind of. Kind of. Norphans. Um, so what has he been up to this year then? He's been getting... Um, he, 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 I think one he of the earliest observed things... observed a crime. He did observe a crime. That's one of the earliest <laughs> things I remember from him this year with um, Simon and Jacob locking that guy up in the boot who they were intimidating mm. because they owed him drugs money or something like that. And um, But he was also um, involved in the Sharon story, wasn't he? Because um, Sharon was trying to get to... Who was she trying to get to? Was it Leanne? And she was trying to get to her through... Sam, yeah, and, um, she ends she was up, so conflicted about it. She, yeah, she was evil, but she didn't want to be. There evil. was there was a great scene I remember where she was <laughs> babysitting Sam, and um, and she was I think she was just trying to kind of scope him out and, and figure out how she could capture him. But he 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 kind of proper broke his I broke her heart by how cute she was, and she was sitting he there. Was, he yeah. was. And, sitting there looking very very sad about it but she oh, went I'm through really... with it anyway yeah. and she she got him kidnapped <laughs> by um by the beardo van man and uh and then he did his little singing in the van didn't he i oh, know he, so, he, so he found so a radio he was listening to stuff about where he counted then they'd park him up somewhere and he sings a little song he's a proper tragic sad orphan material before his parents had even killed off i know and also he now is um a football fan it, well, that lasted for about one episode, yeah. didn't they? I think the He's stars, the stars have been his um, perennial love, and uh, the, well, it was it was that telescope that got him into trouble, getting him kidnapped, wasn't it? Because um, <laughs> that's how they lured him in. Most most yes. bad guys lure children into their cars with sweets, but uh, for Sam, they needed. <laughs> They needed a piece of um, specialist equipment, specialist scientific equipment. Yeah, I said, "Oh, what's that in there?" Um, but I, I really loved, uh, I really loved the scene recently with him and George as well, when uh, when he was going, oh, yes. still in his mute phase, and George brings the uh, the telescope around. That was that was really cute. And they done. have a yeah, oh. Yeah. And speaking of telescopes as well, the other thing that was obviously a uh, key this year with him and the telescope was when he whacked blokey around with a head with it, didn't they? Because um, it was it was the same guy, wasn't it? The the, the beardo man. Um, who had the gun and was he pointing it at Gary maybe and then we hear the gun going off but don't see it and then you kind of cut cut to the scene and Sam's there having whacked him round the head with this massive massive telescope well that's tube. not the only time he uses the telescope as a as some kind of distraction technique or weapon because he also pushed the telescope oh yeah or perhaps it was they? an accident it's a bit of controversy about what <laughs> really got happened got to the bottom of there. that did they um, but yeah that kind of helped him to get help for who was it well, the, the, for, for lily lily after that's she'd right. swallowed that he was uh, taunting him with a with a uh, with a lollipop that soon <laughs> nearly killed her yeah that's the thing. when when sam finally starts talking again probably that's the first thing that i'd want to know did you drop the yeah did you drop the telescope on purpose or did it from tumble accidentally these are the key things is is your cuteness just a ruse because you're actually a serial killer in training mm, maybe, maybe maybe he was honing his skills when he when he knocked the guy out the, earlier this year yeah i think it's been really interesting the uh, the story with his mutism after natasha died as well which by the way 
the scene after she died and he was there in the in the funeral director's place next to the coffin and reading out his speech and everything oh it's so my little heart strings it's, that did. It, he is but yeah the, 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 <sighs> but deciding to to shut him up basically after that for well going on a month and a half or so now isn't it has um, been really interesting because um despite not being able to talk he's still been one of the most compelling characters in the in the episodes that he's been in mm. and uh, his big expressive eyes yeah absolutely and uh, poor old nick who thinks that he's uh you know wants him to make a breakthrough and he's just having to be patient isn't he but uh though do you remember the scene as well when um when abby had a go at him she was playing football with him and jack and then she starts yelling at him why don't you speak why don't you speak i, I can't remember she was she was frustrated about probably Kelly or Seb oh, yeah. or something like In that. Oh, yeah. evil. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, anyway, um, congratulations, Sam. I'm sure we're going to be seeing an awful lot more of you this year. And um, he, he was filming Jude um, another series of Brassic recently as well, wasn't he? So um, he's all over the telly. I hope they didn't, I hope he didn't get poached away by another programme. Better we'll not be seeing tired. you in EastEnders anytime soon, Jude, because uh, we all love you here on Coronation Street. And um, I think it's a, a, a very good addition to, to Nick and Leanne's little family. Although oh, yeah. Leanne's has struggled to accept him this year. But that's, that's part that's been... of the interesting dynamic of that family, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, Leanne having to move on from, from Oliver's death and almost replace him. Although, obviously, you can't replace your dead son. But, you know, <laughs> as isn't I've been it out. interesting that now Sam is going to be in a similar position? And I wonder if there will ever be a scene between the two of them where Leanne says, you know, I know I can't replace your mum. I, I can't remember. I've got a feeling there remember, was one been. earlier this but year. It is, it is sweet that, you know, perhaps now they they can yeah. form a relationship. But, it, you know, in, in the knowledge that they're both on equal footing in that they're both finding bereaved. something that it will never be properly replaced, but comfort in one another yeah. for mutual loss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like some of our other winners um, tonight, um, Jude Riordan has also won plenty of other awards this year. Um, he got <laughs> the NTA, the National Television Award, for Best Newcomer, and he was the youngest ever person to win that award as well, so that's quite an achievement there. Well, I'm he that's got... something I'm going to have to scratch off my list Yeah, then. he got the, uh, the Inside Soaps Best Newcomer Award as well. Um, he won the I Talk Telly Awards Best Soap Performance, and, and now this. So, well, you know, what I think, a year! I think twenty twenty two will perhaps be the year when um, he he gets nominated for the Younger Character Awards, just like with ours, where oh yeah, you know, the the first time you're in it, you get the newcomer, and then mm. yeah, but I mean, the the fact that with the I Talk Telly particularly, he got the Best Soap Performance. Oh that's, yeah, that is that's amazing. basically that's you know that's going up against everybody, and he was also a nominee in our Top Lad category as well, wasn't he? So um, do you reckon that we a should... bright young star for sure? You know how they have the best the the young stars um, in the which one is it the Soap Awards? Yeah, you know they have the young yeah people. yeah yeah. They should have old old people <laughs> battle acts of the year definitely <laughs> why not why not indeed now we have got an acceptance speech coming up from Jude Jordan who um, very kindly recorded something for us and sent it over to a couple of days ago so um, well, let's hand over to Jude I would just like to say thank you for everyone who has voted for me in the Conversation Street po Podcast Awards I'm so so chuffed that I've won the Arcade Award thank you guys for voting and I'll see you guys soon bye isn't he cute? He's Isn't so he lovely. Cute? Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much, Jude. Congratulations on your latest win. I'm sure it won't be the last. Right, let's move on to our next category. Now, we do love a good villain on Coronation Street. On Conversation Street. Our Coronation Street villain on Conversation Street. And our next category, the Wrongan Award, is where we um, celebrate the wrongest of the wrongans, the baddest of the bad ones, the most villainous villains that the street has seen in the year. We have got five nominees in this category. As always, we've got Harvey, um, who came in and did some naughty drug stuff at the beginning of the year. Sharon, who came in and did some naughty taser and stuff. Ray, Corey, and poor old Hashim, no longer with us, didn't even get a nomination for the uh, Tarar Award, but you never know, maybe he will grab the award in this one. Um, I, is it my, I think it's my turn to do the announcement for I this. Thought, yeah. So I will, I will tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, that the winner of the 2021 Conversation Street Award for Wrongen goes to... 
core, blimey, it's Corey. Oh, oh girl, we shake our fists at you. Oh, congratulations. Pretty good, uh, a pretty, um, yeah, I think he... A pretty decisive win pretty, for, uh, yeah. for Corey, Corey Brent there. Um, and it's really interesting because he's been a bit of a slow burner as a, as a villain because he first came into the show two years ago, over two years ago, back in uh, 2019. And uh, back then you thought, oh, he's, uh, he, didn't, you know, he, he didn't think much of him. He's just felt well, like a bit of a thinking... side character. You know, I don't like this kid. I don't know if I'm supposed to not like him, but I really don't like him. It was, it was, we all felt like he came in as um, a bit of a side character to do with, um, who was it that was going out with it? Was it Asher and, Asher and Amy or Asher and Summer? I can't remember. One of them fancied him, but he, he fancied the other one or something and, and nothing much he was came of it. always unpleasant, wasn't he? Yeah. And then in 2020, um, he showed more of his nasty side when he um, uploaded that video of Asher. We were first recorded the video of Asher taking her clothes off. Um, no, he and, record, oh no, he that's right. Then he it. shared it, didn't he? And then it was Kelly who then uploaded it onto the uh, onto the website. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. He recorded it without Ash's permission. Yes, that's right. Kelly got it and then distributed it to the WhatsApp group or whatever. Yes, and then somebody, somebody from that there. group uploaded it to the internet. That's right. That's right. Uh, but again, it kind of felt a little bit like his character was over after that. But then at the beginning of 2021, that's when um, it kind of, he came back round again. And um, by that time, he was going out with, um, going out with Asher again, um, making fun of the choker that um, Nina had got her. Oh, no, no, he wasn't going out with Asher then, was he? I can't even remember. But she, it was that, that must have been when she was going out with Nina. She gives her the choker. He calls her a dog. It's irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Now, he was going out with her. He goes out with Asha at some point and he yes. is very cruel to her. And yes. Yasmin Yasmin picks says up to her, this. this is what happened with me and Jeff. You you need to watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he makes right. fun of her appearance, yeah, um, yeah. He, which is even more significant to viewers that know Asha's history of having, you know... Um, a lack of self confidence about yeah. her appear, her, the way she looks, mm, mm. and um, he's you know negs her and stuff, and she she dumps him. Yes, and then and then she starts going out with Nina, doesn't she? And he kind of shows his face again there, and is pretty vile about that relationship. Well, because he he's always had a problem with Nina because of the way that she dresses. Yeah, but then Asher and Nina split up, and then she starts going out with Corey again, doesn't she? And that's when he's they... so narrow minded that he can't like anybody who's different from him is insulting him by not being like Corey. You yeah. know, he can't conceive of somebody who might have a different opinion to him about the colour black. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he's had such a privileged background as well that he's always had things go his way. And, um, yeah. and, and when they didn't, and when, you know, things turned sour with, with him and Asher, he, he didn't know how to, how to respond to it. And we also saw, way. you know, how terrible his parents were and how permissive them. his father was and... Perhaps that feeds into this sense of entitlement that he has where, um, you know, I think his dad just sets him up with a flat. Yeah, Stefan was blind to all of Corey's faults, wasn't he? He thought he could buy his child's success and love. Hmm. And he all he did really was set him up for abject failure. Yeah, because Asher and Corey moved out into uh, Victoria, Victoria Court, Court, didn't they? He, he didn't seem particularly into them being in a relationship well, he and setting up happy families. But Asher she... to be his maid. Yeah, basically. Um, and she was that... very cute because she was like, oh, set up the house. She reminded me of... Um, of Anne from the famous five whenever they got to like the little campsite or their cave Anne would go oh, I'm going to put the larder over here I've got a gingerbread cake here we can all have some pop yeah so, um, Corey just wanted to play his, play his shooting games in there and watch TV and yeah. also kick Seb to death well some of those things are more um, fun than others well, and yeah. I would say that I've done one or two of them myself so um, I'm not going to play too much I think he was cemented as a proper proper evil villain for the ages when he, we had that attack on Seb although even back then we didn't know the extent well, to which he was involved in it he kind of transitioned slowly from antagonist to villain didn't he yeah because there's he, definitely a difference between the two he was even an antagonist at the um the wasteland scene, wasn't he? Where they were all the all the all the nasty teens were lounging about, <laughs> Naughty. and uh, he was encouraging Kelly to to hit um, to hit Nina, and uh, then he goes and chases her. But yeah, a- after the attack, 
he's um he just doesn't particularly show any remorse about what happened and we we later see in the flashbacks that he's that he was the main one who did it he ran off leaving kelly to deal with this writhing um body on the floor he goes and changes his clothes chucks the bag in the canal mistake cory uh, and then goes home and is like totally relaxed about the whole thing isn't he but there, there was that great scene where he's looking in the mirror a bit of a what have i done scene but by the end of the evening he's kind of under the impression that he's got away with it and 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 that's what we see from him a very cocky attitude all the way through you know, the court appearance um which he also manages to walk free from he, he joins the weatherfield football club he thinks everything's going his way he does he's like the epitome of privilege <clears throat> isn't he yeah Remember that press conference he yeah. did where it was just where he starts where he says, "Oh, I'm I'm so sorry. People are accusing me, but it, it, I, 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 I would, would say never I'm, do such a thing. I would it's say terrible. I'm sorry to the victims because um, because he, he he had to admit he was there, but he he didn't have anything to do with it. And um, the the the, uh, the other thing that people remember a lot about him this year is when he got away with it when he was found not guilty. He did that little wink to Abby, didn't he? Oh yeah. <laughs> he was just oh he was he was skin crawlingly. Vile, played Corey. so well. Oh yeah, I mean Max Max, Max Evans, Evans is a real, been a real star of the street this Honestly, year. Honestly, so compelling and and um, sinister, and he's like reveling too in in his evilness mm. um, because he just loves. He just thinks he's great because he he knows that he's on the top of the pile. Yeah, he and there's really a certain really kind of um, person who who genuinely thinks that if they have more money than you they're better than you are and especially like being a footballer too because they get treated like heroes by lots of people and idolized so what a perfect job for for somebody like Corey, mm. who already thinks highly of himself yeah. and you see people like marcus rashford who use that um celebrity for real good and social change and then you look at Corey he's such a horrible scrape <laughs> but it was always good to see him at times where he was snivelling like there was a great scene yeah. where uh, Nina came after him with a trophy where where Abby went after him with a gun in the sinkhole thing I and mean, when when he um he puts on his big bad wolf costume doesn't he and tracks her through the Horonation Street ghost house thing but when she pulls a gun on him and fires it suddenly. into the mirror suddenly all that bravado and cockiness disappears in an instant yeah. and you get to see him there as a snivelling wreck and then they, then they fall through the floor and it all gets a bit oh. silly but it's very very dramatic and fun and he's there with the gun at Gabby isn't he because there, there was the moment where we thought is, is he going to shoot Abby here but um, he does give this snivelling confession to her that yes, he did do it after she manages to get the gun from him. And um, it looked like everything was going to go his way and he was going to disappear off to Germany where he got poached by another club, but he didn't count on Stu, the uh, little homeless man who probably would have never given any thought to as being the one who would ultimately uh, have the evidence that would lead to his downfall, the, the Weatherfield County bag that he threw in the canal. And uh, it all spiralled downwards from there and he gets a, a nice little uh, final episode where... They think that he thinks he's escaping in the back of a van, doesn't he? With right, driven by Gary. Well, yeah, he, he, he unbeknownst to them, it was driven by Gary because yes. Gary's able to pay off or beat up or something. Whatever. I don't know the original driver, and uh, he yeah, unloads him at the police uh, police station. And the, the last thing we see from Corey was um, him, justice, him, justice, and being snivellingly dragged away by one of the officers. It's very there. interesting to me that, uh, similar to Ray, he's been imprisoned rather than killed. Yeah, and I think I went into the Horonation Street story thinking he could get killed this week. I was convinced he was going to be killed off, honestly. Yeah, because quite often they they do kill off the big bads, don't they? You know, your but the thing is, your... yeah, yeah, definitely. But as long as Nina and, and Abby are in the show and Corey is still alive, there's still a chance that they might bring him back because he's also the sort of person I can imagine obsessing over this terrible injustice that's been done to him by these two evil meddling women yeah you know like nothing's his fault ever and so the fact he's in prison must be due to those two and i can see him breaking out or being released early or something well, I'd, and... I'd be quite interested to see um another story in the future where somebody else gets sent to prison and he's there as like the leader of some uh, kind of evil gang the, the prison gang like, or um, something i don't know how it, i don't really understand how it works and like how I'm sure being rich has benefits in prison, even though you don't have um, as much access to things as you do on the outside. But I can just imagine him, you know, ha like 
a- acquiring a-, a gang of goons as his protection mm. because his you know his dad's paying their families off or or something so that he's untouchable even in prison although or would it be interesting to see him like the inverse where he's like at the bottom of the pecking order and somebody sees you know how how low he's fallen oh, I, I don't think I don't know whether we'd that would want be to... a satisfying honest like I don't know whether we'd want the the viewer to feel sorry for him. I think you would. I think you naturally would feel bad for him. I don't really want to feel bad for Corey because he's so evil. Yeah. I and mean, if they're going going to go down the route where, uh, or stay down the route where Jim McDonald is definitely a bad one, maybe he can get arrested at some point and uh, lay the boot into Corey or something. Yeah. <laughs> would, would that be an ultimate ending for Jim McDonald? What, murdering <laughs> Corey Kicks in Corey prison. to death in prison. How ironic. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. I, I'm really, really glad that uh, Corey won this and it was a pleasure to speak to, to Max earlier this year as well about his, yes. uh, his character on the podcast. I heard lovely things about him as well. Yes, absolutely. So, um, shall we move on to the next award? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, I, we will. I will we have Gemma's it. permission. Let's go. Now it's time for the Flaming Nora Award, which celebrates those flame-haired, wonderful characters of Corrie, very time-honoured tradition, um, in the show and also for our podcast. We're the only people that have a celebrate. red-headed award. Yeah, we, we celebrate them. I think it's very them. important to celebrate Exactly, this. because they are rare and beautiful and they need to be protected. Yes. Like, what's a good and rare, beautiful... Like, They're like rubies, aren't they? Precious rubies of the of Oh, the I was road. thinking of like polar bears or something. Maybe. Because honestly, if you mess with them... They're, More like they're red like... pandas. Mm. I'm trying to think of more... Red no, like here. polar bears because <laughs> okay. they'll mess you up <laughs> and don't eat the liver. Definitely. Well, we have got five nominees this year. Um, we have Jenny, um, who we spoke about earlier in the Daisy story, but she's been uh, you know, ticking along very nicely this year. Fizz. Fizz has had a lot of significant stories. She, she really, really has. And, and that's why well, the, the main story that she's been in hasn't been awarded um, yet in the uh, in the conversation. Gary. So maybe this will be the time. Gary, who's still managing to get away with... Has he actually got red hair? Yes. Or is it just blonde? No. Proper gingers, Gary. Craig. Craigie. Officer Tinker. Officer Secret Keeper. Very important role when there's so many Shh. villains on the street. And of course, Phil, a newbie um, to the street this year, who's been going out with Fizz and a happy red-headed family. Gemma, I'm going to pass over to you to announce our name. The winner of the Flaming Nora Award for 2021 is... Jenny! Hooray! Jenny Connor again. <laughs> this Yay. is the seventh year in a row that Jenny has uh, won this award. Although Fizz was getting closer this year, wasn't she? Fizz she was, was snapping at the old That's heels right, yeah. this year. Um, because I think Jenny McAlbourne's been doing a fab, fab job in, in that story. But yeah, Jenny Who could the, resist to the, post the allure again. of of Jenny it Connor could. the the Rover's landlady exactly she'd, she'd sling you out she'd bar you if you exactly. didn't vote for her um, so tell me what's happened to her this year well, then what's been where going? can we begin sad start to the year because old Johnny well sad start middle and end really but um, Johnny was in prison he got sent down earlier on didn't he for his uh, part in the uh, in, in the warehouse robbery in the 70s what's that I can't remember so Jenny's left holding the fort at the Rover's again and um at least she does have Daisy there by her side as a uh, as a wing woman. Although um, I, I can think of people I'd probably rather have helping me out in my business. Daisy is more interested in helping Jenny um, with her romance. With yeah, exactly. She tries to set her up with any man who comes into the pub, basically that, ca- that c- could catch her interest. And um, there was also I, I remember really really lovely scene with Jenny and Rita earlier in the year when um, Jenny was just worrying about the, the state of things with Johnny and you know what. How long is this going to be? And is, well, is he going to get worse? And this was when... the year of the 10,000th episode. No, no, no. Last year was the 10,000th episode. I'm totally she... losing track of time. I did wonder. Yeah, or oh, this pandemic. It's done, it's done us, done it to us all, Gemma. Can it's we all fine. just say that the last two years was just one year? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Um, yeah, Actually... So... That works for me then because I'm not forty this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, forty this year, yeah. Joe. I, I, um, I think the the biggest, most memorable Jenny moment this year, at least for me, was uh, when she bedded Uncle Ronnie Bailey. Made him take his hat off and everything. I know. Exactly. I bet he didn't take his hat off. I bet he I, left. I bet it he on. didn't. I bet he left his hat on. Oh, I was so mad about that, Jenny. What are you doing to me? She is. 
Not only is she red haired, but she's re- red blooded, Michael. She is. She, she, she can resist. And I spoke to Sal about this on the podcast a couple of months ago, and she said, Well, Johnny has been treating her pretty badly for the last few years. He so, hasn't oh, been the, the he's nicest. He's not been the best of husbands, but he's such a nice guy, isn't he, Johnny? He's the can, best of husbands. I can, oh, thanks. Um, I can forgive him many things, and um, it was just a shame that Jenny couldn't can keep her knickers up for another. What are you another talking? couple of days because Johnny was just about to well, be released from prison. It did. It did um, cause the rift, didn't it? And yes. who would know? Who could say if she had um, not shagged about? Maybe Johnny would still be alive. Ma- oh, maybe. Don't, maybe don't he wouldn't have just drowned himself in despair and boredom. In, <laughs> I'm, I'm in glad. Sewer. He's like, I'm not really in this program anymore because I don't live on coronation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they had an amicable split up. If they were gonna, if they were gonna go their separate ways, then um, this is how know, you do but it. I think, honestly, Jenny deserves props this year for having one of the most tragic love stories of Coronation Street. Oh ever. yeah. Really, this was one of my favourite bits of, of the the whole Jenny story has been this love story between her and Johnny, you know, the unlikely um like cleaning woman who catches the eye of the factory boss and they have an illicit <laughs> affair and then she gets delusions of grandeur and she has a whole room just for her mood board for her wedding. <laughs> then when they actually get married she realises what's truly important. It's not the fountain in the country manor because that's being besmirched by women having a fight in it. No, she drives to the hospital on the back of a motorbike <laughs> with her husband-to-be to get married in the presence of the woman that she calls her mother who who was um, there for her when no one else was. And then they they sort of... Another fall, top ginger. Then, because of family tragedy, they kind of fall apart. But then right near the very end... They yeah. reunite that passionate kiss in the sewer. Don't think too much <laughs> about what was in the water. And then she loses him so tragically as he drifts away. And, and through that tunnel, you know, the, the metaphor of the tunnel where they're... they're, they're so the close, but thing, so far. Exactly, they're separated. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was sad uh, it and was, tragic and it beautiful. Was really, it was really, it was very bittersweet. And it, it had been very sad with Johnny confessing to... Some other characters in the weeks running up to this that he finds it really difficult to see Jenny moving on. But at least they, they did have a couple of nice scenes together, actually. Some friendly chit chats in the back of the Rovers, even after they split. Because he, he goes to sell the pub, doesn't he? So she has to raise the funds to, to get it herself. So she is now the sole proprietor of the Rovers' return, isn't she? I think D- Daisy didn't end up contributing, did she? She no. was going to, but she was uh, the, 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 the double glammy money. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But um, she has got a new man now, hasn't she? We, we saw her on New Year's Eve. Um, seeing in 2022 with uh with a head on leo's shoulders she's so very loved can, up isn't she I she can't is see that a little anymore. bit at the moment she's um she's got over johnny quite quickly but and the other hey. thing that happened this year was her rivalry with fellow foster daughter Sharon, oh yes of where, course where she got jealous didn't she and and that was great having those two those two fan classic characters from the 80s for the affection of rita <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 loved yeah. it and um and then when jenny finds out that sharon's went up to naughty business she uh she confronts her in the street and gets tasered leading Brilliant. to many people's of scene of the scenes. year yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> did love having sharon back but um yeah those two are, are it was really great was so fun what fun and also the, the way both of those actresses and the way the characters were written perfectly me- made the story work whether you had seen them in those early appearances yeah. or not which a lot of people could, wouldn't have done you can totally get from the from what was happening that they had this really deep deep history <laughs> i just though, loved it they'd never met before either had they no and but i really, they, yeah. they instantly were like I, i'm well, the exactly. main daughter no i'm the main exactly daughter. yeah the, yeah i loved it speaking it of rivalries as well i've also enjoyed uh jenny versus debbie for the few scenes that we got of that because they were both competing for ronnie's affections weren't they i did like that yes because really people don't give her credit but actually jenny is just as much of a businesswoman as the rest of them mm. you know you've got carla you've got Debbie, very ruthless and sort of powerful, or in her heyday, what Carla was. But Jenny, actually, you know, she just gets, keeps her head down and gets on with it. But she's just as formidable, really. Yeah, because she has steered her pub through the pandemic. I know, which is not bad for someone who doesn't have a business background. <laughs> because no. she, she was a paper girl, then she... Um, I can't cleaner. Remember what, yeah, cleaner for a bit. She, I think in oh, the in interim bit, period she on. was on the cruise ships. Hang on, let's she? not dismiss her, because she did ask Rita for that money so she could start a, a salon, didn't she? Oh yes, that's She's true, always had she? ambitions. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah, and now she is landlady. Amazing. And um, 
I, I, I think that there's um, hopefully a lot more fun stuff Is to come for Jenny come this off? year. The fact that she was left Johnny's money and nobody really knows why. Yeah, she's got a 10k, hasn't she? I don't know. Won't go far on Ooh, shoes. Oh, I, I hope that Leo's not going to try and steal it away from her. He might do. He that. might be. He might be a gold digger. Maybe. All, she, the Rovers is just a series gold. of people going. You're a gold digger. It's a festering a pit digger. of gold diggers. Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, I absolutely love Jenny. One of my favourite characters for sure. So very glad to see that she has picked up this award. How many yet years? Again. She needs to win it another three years before. Yeah. She becomes the Anton Deck of the Conversation Street Awards. <laughs> I think she already is. Isn't I think she, she? is. I yeah. think she is. Well, you know, bring in more redheads, Coronation Street. We love no, her. Give her a I bit think of Jenny, I think we should call this the Jenny Connor Award <laughs> for best Jenny Connor. <laughs> she deserves it. She does. She does. And, Absolutely um, love her. Love Sal. She's fantastic. Yes. And she has recorded an acceptance speech for us Absolutely. as well, which we'll play to you right now. E bygone. Flipping it. The Flaming Nora Award. I'm just a bit again. Wow, thank you to everybody who voted. I mean, Cory has a strong history of redheads, and to uh, be crowned the Titian Queen again, uh, I'm over the moon. Made my 2022, may your 2022 be safe and free and joyous and a bit sunnier and uh, full of lovely, lovely things. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, lovely, lovely Sal. We hope your 2022 is good. Love Sal, love Jenny. Absolutely my favourite. I'm so chuffed that she got such a fantastic part in the Horonation Street storyline. Yes, oh, I'm so glad about that. She definitely deserves this award because she's a stunt woman now. Yeah, fall into a pile of boxes. Exactly. (laughs) That's all her own stunts, isn't it? (laughs) Right, let's move on to the next award. Bayek, Gemma, it's time for our next award, the Bayek Award for the most surprising twist. And this is one of my favourite bits of Coronation Street when they spring a surprise on you that you didn't see coming, even if you had been looking at the previews, which I still try not to. Um, We've got five nominees here for um, storyline twists that took us all by surprise, maybe. Um, Unless you're a very good predictor. Yeah, these are things they didn't announce in advance. Maybe some people theorised they might happen. But just as with... Um, Andy turning out to be in uh, Pat's basement. basement. We might have in our wildest dreams have imagined something along these lines, but when it actually comes true, it's just amazing and brilliant. Yes, and it needs to happen more often, Coronation Street. Yes, that's what I did. <gasps> I was the producer. Forget the soap bags. <gasps> like that. Don't tell anyone anything that's going to happen. Right, um, so the Bayek Award nominations, we have got the revelation that Sharon, who'd been going around on the street being a bit dodgy for a while, is actually... Harvey's aunt. Oh no. We had Faye's prison sentence of three years. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. And that was that was, that that was, was a shock at the time. I mean, she'd I, be like, oh, she's, she's gonna get out of She's this fine thing. now, but I thought we were maybe losing the and character Croatian, for three she's years. She's like, spoiler, she is not. <laughs> um, Seb's death, which we spoke about earlier. Um, Imran sleeping with Abby because we knew that he'd had a one night stand with somebody but he said it was just some random woman at a bar but it was later revealed a few weeks later that it was uh, the lovely Miss Franklin who he'd been um, having a fumble between the sheets with and um, now finally there was the Horror Nation Street twists and it was kind of I don't know because I was really trying hard to stay away from that week. I don't know exactly what was spoiled and what wasn't, but uh, definitely Johnny's death and Natasha's death were, were unspoiled moments there, and I'm sure there were some other twists and turns mixed up in there as well. You can decide for yourself if you voted for that one. But the winner of the 2021 Conversation Street Bayek Award goes to Seb's death. No. Yes, indeed. We've already, he's dead, he's dead. We've already talked about this one, so I don't know how much we can say about it particularly, other than the fact that um, how much of a surprise it was. Because well, we knew that there was going to be. Well, the previews had said. I didn't. I don't think I knew about this, but the previews had, you know, At the advertised. Of the year. Oh, this is going to be an exciting confrontation, violence. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Every new year, Ian McLeod does a little interview, and, he, and he's done one this week actually. It's <gasps> just been published like today, maybe even. Um, saying, here's some of the things that are happening <laughs> in Coronation year, Street this year. We're going to have a storyline about a pair of Just meddlesome podcasters I... <laughs> that know too much and won't shut up. <laughs> yeah. And they get, they get drowned in a pond and everyone claps. If they put a story where, where Gemma 
and Michael on Coronation Street do a podcast together and they're really annoying. <laughs> that would I be think so that's... funny. You'd be like, hang on. Are you know? trying to tell us that? I think no, they're, I'm they're ha- if, if you want to know hint. clues about what's happening this year in Corrie, then um, do go and have a read of that. You can find it on the Coronation Street blog, among other places. But um, yeah, this time last year, he said that there would be a big social realism story that would draw Roy and Abby together. And I think I remember saying yeah. that at the time, thinking, oh, what on earth would be going on there then? But obviously that was... Um, Roy's niece and Abby's son Nina and Seb getting together and then the the tragic uh, events of the hate crime attack on them Um, the previews of the week itself had said that Seb and Nina would be attacked following a confrontation at the Wasteland so that was all kind of out there if you wanted to read it and they'd also said that Kelly would slap Nina as well Uh, and this would all be happening during Abby and Kevin's stag and hen night parties but um, it wasn't revealed I believe that Seb would actually die from uh, from the from the wounds from the uh, of his attack and um, and I think and they even left it an episode or two maybe didn't they before Seb was actually killed it wasn't on the night of no, the attack right. itself no, no. Um, we we were like, left guessing what's gonna happen? who Who's would gonna survive die? because yeah. it because at the very beginning I think that the doctors were saying oh it looks like Nina's actually in yeah, a much you're right, actually. worse position and Seb's just unconscious we'll mm. see what happens but you know here's Nina's bag of things Roy yeah. you might want to go to George and ask him for a mahogany Although I, th- I think the previews, and maybe this could have been done better, the previews at the time for the following week made out that Nina was definitely conscious and they just kind of didn't mention what Seb was up to. Oh, right. So some people might have guessed from that. but the um, and, and I think as they were, as we were going through that second episode, the aftermath of the attack episode, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to kill Seb off, are they? Surely not. He's only just got together with Nina. There's beautiful romance that's, that's, come, that's come together here. They're not going to kill Seb off. And then they did, and up to the last moment, I was like, oh, they've actually done it. And I, I, as sad as it is when characters have to leave the show sometimes, um, having the rug pulled out from under you and being utterly surprised or being taken by surprise by, by a twist is a lot of fun to watch, isn't it? <laughs> Similar with Johnny, I suppose. Didn't want him to go. Didn't know for sure that he was going to go, but it made for great telly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, it, was, it was obviously... Um, well publicised in advance as being based on the Sophie Lancaster case um, and and that was when Sophie herself died wasn't it so I think some people were wondering is this going to be the end of Nina um, but I think, I think that because her time in Coronation Street had clearly just been beginning and she was so so popular I know but you know there's a lot to say for a shock uh, death of a popular character mm. and also I mean Nina was brought in and right from the very um, outset of the character Ian McLeod said he knew that this would be leading up to this story so he could well have decided I'm going to kill her off then and that was just the way that was just the trajectory the story was going to go whether whether she captured the hearts of the viewer or not but no it did did end up being Seb Seb um, and they did such a great job too of creating a really beautiful romance between the two yeah. Seb and Nina and um, much much more care it goes to show you how well, Coronation Street can write this kind of story if they put their minds to it. Um, and I would love to see the same kind of attention given to some more established relationships. Yes, yeah, me too. But, um, this is, yeah, what a shock when Seb died. Yeah. And it really, think... it was really upsetting too. And it's kind of similar to what happened with Luke, where I didn't really know how much I cared about the character. Before. Yeah, you're absolutely it right. It was snatched away in his prime. Because Seb Another had... young man dead. Seb hadn't Street. had a lot to do for a good while on Coronation Street. But he was a he? decent kid. He, he and was. Honestly, um, Abby, Abby was right about, you know, she, she, she despite her, her um, upbringing of him, he turned out to be a fundamentally decent nice person mm. I, lo- I loved him in the feeling story like when he got his hands on the gun and everything yeah. like that and uh, fell falling off the ladder and all the stuff with nicola and all, and all that but um yeah the, the character had certainly um gone off the radar a little bit in 2020 I know, but he was but, brave and decent uh, he, you know, he was he, he tried was, to save his sis- brother and sister from yeah the the care system are oh. yeah they, they did a real good job of um making us really care for him when it counted in the weeks before his death. And uh, we're still missing him now. Yeah. So uh, congratulations, Seb. Another award for your dad this time, just for how shocking it is. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> ah, new love. Who doesn't love a good soap romance? And uh, this year on Coronation Street, we saw a number of couples tying um, 
No, not no, tying the knot. Pledging their troth. P- pledging their... What? Pledging their troth. Is that a yeah. phrase? They did that to each other, apparently. We did a bit of tying the knot. But the LO Love Award is where we celebrate the new couples on the street and see um, which which um, pair we thought had the the most potential as a couple. It doesn't necessarily mean they stayed together or they're still together now, but ones that we were really into um, at the time, at least. The uh, nominees this year are Fizz and Phil, who are still together at the moment. I thought they'd maybe be over by now, but they're still going strong for the time being. Um, Seb and Nina, who we've just talked about a little bit. Um, Daisy and Daniel. Again, they're um, they're having a bit of a break at the moment um, after everything that went on with it with Ashley and that a couple of weeks ago. Asher and Nina as well. And then Emma and Curtis. Uh, My which favorite. ones of these are actually we've got we've got Fizz and Phil are still together and Asher and Nina are still together my favourite is when we do this category and somebody appears on the list twice yes Nina Nina the Randy Mare you serial shagger <laughs> although I can't remember whether she had she, had she gone to bed with Asher yet I can't remember because that was a bit of a thing at the beginning well, of the year wasn't they, it they had that very chaste kiss didn't they they did which was filmed um, with the Covid restrictions in full effect oh yes um, so we haven't seen anything beyond that apart from maybe they were inspired by Dev's French movie night. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe. Right, Gemma, I'll pass over to you to announce our winner for this one. The winner of the LA Love Award for Best New Romance in 2021 is... Seb and Nina. Oh, another Just... award for Seb. He's raking him in tonight. Well, you know, this happens quite often when a character has a spectacular exit. A lot of the storylines or categories revolve around them. And it really was kind of an essential part to set up the tragedy of the the murder that he formed a very intense uh, and brief love affair with, with Nina before he went so that we it, number one we've got a reason to be super sad when he dies but also we've got somebody to mourn him after he passes yes I mean that you're right it was very very brief and very very intense but it was like four or five weeks maybe because they started seeing each other at the beginning of April and then the attack was what, 5th of May I think so um it was yeah very, the, this candle burned very bright and very fast but everybody loved them didn't they and people had been quite um supportive of Asha and Nina as well they'd certainly get, got their fans earlier on in the year but it was something else for Seb and Nina everybody loved them together and um I, I, I don't think there were many people really that thought one of them's going to be killed soon even no, though no we way. knew this attack was going to be happening as well no way it wasn't signaled and it wasn't you know a weird, like weirdly um, focused on, was it? No, no. It was another one of these romances as well that starts off when you think, well, these characters never have had any interaction before. What, what are they doing now? Like, um, you know, with Peter and Tina. When I always think back to when they first started going out. They never had anything to do with each other. She speaks to him in one scene, the next scene they're shagging away. But um, Nina and Seb's kind of relationship started that scene when she set out all the coffee tables from Roy's on the on the That's street right, to protest yeah. against traffic. And then uh, that was blocking Seb's route. So he has kind of words with her there. And um, later on, either that episode or later in the week, I can't remember, they talk together about him being picked on because of his hair and they bond over their shared love of cradle of filth, was it, I think? It's like, okay, I'll I'll accept that. It was weird because I, that felt a lot more acceptable than uh, Tyrone and Elena bonding over their supposed love of dogs and cars. It just sort of worked more for, for Seb and Nina. I'm not sure why. Well, you know, I don't think we were ever supposed to really buy... Tyrone and Alina as a as a couple I'm not sure I don't know whether they d- it deliberately felt hollow I don't know I just also didn't believe Alina when she said I love Kyra's too like I what <laughs> when have you ever at least with both of them you can go I get it I understand mm. well um, I can believe that at the time Harry Viznoni who plays uh, Seb said that it came out of nowhere but it was one of those instant spark kind of things when you meet someone and you click on every level and it, it really really was there was um he, he was very optimistic as well interestingly in those interviews about how he describes the relationship even though he knew full well what was around the corner he was talking about oh, oh they could they could be together forever and it, it, oh it's so so tragic that they didn't um he he's he's also talked about the fact that um like Nina Seb had a kind of a cynical outlook on life both a bit sarcastic 
Um, that they had well, they both interests. had really tragic upbringings, haven't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, not that I don't think Nina. No, Nina. Did Nina lose her mother early? Yeah. yeah. So they've they've kind of had tragedy in their past, and they've had a tough time. And we know that um, Nina has been harassed by her neighbours, and she was living in that flat. Mm. So they've 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 kind of like fought through a hostile world, and they still find beauty and happiness where where they can mm. and they kind of bonded over that and it also helps that they both had charisma with each other you know there was definitely a spark there yeah between the two actors mm. for sure um it, i just thought it was really cute some of the things that they made the characters do to in the early throes of their romance like um he invites himself to one of her uh gigs, gigs yeah <laughs> and which he like goes to a mosh pit for the first time or something and he he does himself up in goth gear a little bit but uh, then it kind of goes wrong no, what was that happened? He, he well, went he to a gig, it, then he yeah. then she makes him a, a goth cupcake. Do you remember that one with the black yeah. icing on it? was cute. But then she, she catches him, kind of making fun of her a little bit. It was it was when he was at work with um, Ed and Paul at the builder's yard, and they make him dress up in a black bin bag, don't they? And he kind of prances around a bit, being being Nina, but he was kind of egged on to it. She sees that and then gets all upset with him. So he upsets by putting on his full-on goth rega- regalia of a... Was he in, like, a top hat and massive panda eyes and everything? And he has a, uh, a funeral flower arrangement thing that says Nina and this is when she kind of says no this isn't me you're making fun of me now because what I look like isn't a costume for me it's my identity and it's who I am and you sort of putting on this thing it's so offensive to me and they kind of he he understands this and they and they bond over that and get back together after after that um Seb kind of moves pretty quickly on this relationship because um there was a scene just before the attack, a couple of days before, I think, when Seb is looking for um, jewellery for Abby for her upcoming wedding, and he makes a comment oh, about, um, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy an engagement ring for you one day, Nina." And he's kind of only half joking, but it kind of feels a bit, in, in some, you know, for a lot, for a lot of characters, if they were to say that, you think, "Hang on a minute, it's a bit previous, isn't it? You've only just started going out with a girl." But because of the intensity and the 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 beauty of this romance so early on it 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 felt as if you were like oh that's so sweet actually I know. but Roy overheard it and he was a, a bit like, concerned bit, about like, this is how quick it was moving fast. um but but in the end um Seb ends up giving her that that heart ring which was you know the symbol of their their relationship and when uh when the attack happened and the ring goes scattering across the or clattering across the floor and also in the um on the the flashback scene where you see Nina reaching out to Seb and and the camera kind of pans down the road and it slows down over the ring. That was uh, certainly an icon of uh, of 2022 in Coronation Street. And um, yeah, and that, it and was, that was a really, end. it was a kind of really cute symbol of the whole relationship, wasn't it? Because mm. it was um, a, a kind of a cheap little trinket that held so much more meaning than you would ever think if you looked at them. Like if you look at that ring, it doesn't inspire anything in, in you and perhaps that's a, that's sort of something you can say that people like Corey have the same reaction if they look at Nina, you know. They they just see the surface and they don't understand what they're really looking at. Mm. Um, and it was it's also quite an innocent and kind of almost childlike thing. Yeah. Because this, was, this relationship came at a time of their lives when they're still transitioning between childhood and adulthood. And... Uh, the, perhaps their first romance who knows whether they would have ended up together for the rest of their lives but it was kind of a transition between the two between the yeah. two states yeah, I, I mean, just he, thought it was very sweet he, he'd been he'd gone out well he came into the show being Faye's boyfriend yeah. hadn't he but they Faye's were very Jesus young boyfriend. There. yeah and then he went out with Emma for a bit and that was kind of cute but it kind of got all muddied up with the whole Emma and Alina and Seb love triangle thing which didn't, was, didn't wasn't work. really that great but um, this, this was lovely and, and the fact that they were able to do it with COVID filming restrictions as well. I know. Like there was there was no hand holding, no kissing it or anything between. It goes to show you, them. honestly, we often will argue against sex scenes and kissing and stuff as they seem to think that they can just Raunchiness. chuck that in and that is shorthand for they really are romantically interested in each other. And actually, the most powerful romance, I think, I'm going to say this is the the most skillfully constructed, most powerful romantic story they've ever managed to do. 
in in such a short amount of time. In such a short amount of time, we we've seen the glimpses Just over before. A month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they've managed to utterly convince everybody. It reminded, these two. it reminded me a little bit of the old episodes that we watched with uh, Irma and David, Irma Ogden and David yeah, Barlow, and they, they had really some really had beautiful yeah, stuff. And we and we did. only saw a few episodes but of again, that, but you could tell that they it's clicked. because they didn't need, or they couldn't back in those days, no. go, well, they've shagged now, so they love each other, okay? No, but, uh, but we did at least get a kiss in the flashbacks, didn't we? When they were yeah. there hiding behind the... Uh, behind the pipes or wherever it was so uh, it was all very very lovely but sadly uh not not to be for for long so uh, we'll have to wait and see what uh cupid has got in store for cory in 2022 but for now let's move on to our next award now it's time for ecky thump which is which is our category for the best fight of the year um, we love this category. We, we do. love it when characters have a good old scrap, don't we? We do. Well, th- this year it's usually best fight, but this year it was best punch because we did right. we didn't actually get any proper fights this year because of the COVID restrictions and everything. But um, there were certainly some good bops on the nose, which is uh, how, how we've been able to pick our nominees for this one. I'm hoping that next year we'll be able to get some proper full on soap scraps again. I want an elaborate scene like the um, Peter versus the chicken in Family Guy. Yeah, something along those lines. Well, please. I mean, Corey kind of semi-celebrated the, the easing of COVID restrictions by putting on the Horror Nation Street, didn't they? But I think that, um, you know, probably things are getting going to get a bit worse again, but maybe when I've... they get better again, they'll be able to celebrate by having a massive rumble well, between a load of, of characters. Well, first of all, they celebrated um, with a kiss between Danny and James. Oh, yes. But I'd rather see them fight. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, knocking we've still had, out of each other. We still had some cracking nominees this this year whether you want to choose that as a pun or not it's up to you peter punches ken we had ardy punching Corey. kevin whacking imran with a very cool back, backhander backhander yeah <laughs> we had harvey knocking out kevin hey, well, gonna be punching him again soon <laughs> <laughs> and max punching daniel very recently so those are all really i don't know a lot of them were kind of comical <laughs> because uh yeah, I think a bit of a diff on the nose is quite funny to watch. It's not funny to get one, no. but it's fun to watch. It, it is, although, I mean, it, pe- people might get, um, you know, they say, oh, pe- there was a, uh, a crime about somebody getting beaten up and everything, and that in one way you're saying violence is wrong and now you're glorifying it by, by having this character punch another one and being supposedly in the right about it. It's, it's a tricky one, isn't well, it? Well, we haven't nominated Corey for kicking Seb, have we, in here? We haven't done that No, one, this no. is kind of a comedic category almost this year. Um, and some of these people deserved to get a whack and some of them <laughs> didn't. Um, but they're all they're all. Pretty. I do not condone violence. We watched, we watched all of these back. I condone violence. Exactly. We watched all these back and pretty pleased with all of them as being But nominees. who's the winner, Jammer? The winner of the Epic Thump Award for the best punch of 2021 goes to Ardy Punching Corey. <laughs> now, this was great because he deserved it, didn't he? A little slime Well, ball. maybe. And if, Ar- if Ardy knew what Corey would gonna, was going to get up to later in the year, I think he would have kicked him as, himself while he yeah, was so down. Yeah, this, this was early on in the year when Ardy and Asher were uh, still going out and they were both at it like rabbits. Corey was the... taunting Ardy. Yeah, well, the, 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 the scene was, in the episode, um, Ardy starts off... Um, I think Corey's making breakfast in the morning and then Ardy goes off to school and he comes back and Corey's still there making himself a sandwich and he's clearly stayed at home all day in bed with Asher. Um, and he and Corey's just, again, very true to character, very cocky about the whole thing. But, all, but he kind of says to Ar- 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 Ardy, oh, you know, I, if you want, I can help you with your little problem. You know, you're not getting with any girls yet. And, and this had been something that we'd seen before had been playing on Ardy's mind, hadn't it? And he, he has gone out with Summer since, but it feels like up until that point, and even, even now really, because the relationship with Summer didn't last too long, he's not necessarily been a hit with the ladies himself. So having this this nasty oik Corey saying, oh, I can help you with it, clearly just making fun of him, no wonder riled him up. But then he gives him the, uh, the, the ultimate ammunition when he says... Um, Oh yeah, I'm making this sandwich. I got such a such an appetite. It's your sister. She's knackering me out with all her sexual demands. <laughs> and then Ardy just he's red and bashes him in the face, which is amazing. <laughs> and then he does a little hair swoosh as well, doesn't he? Because he's a uh, oh, he had he's his, got, he had got his quite his a luxurious curtains. Yes, he did. He did. 
Uh, I just also I love I love the fact that RD is is such a funny character, but he wasn't he still had a pop at him, mm. even though he can be quite comedic. He was defending his sister's honor. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of like that kind of sibling little um, uh, uh, relationship that they've got. And uh, yeah, Corey definitely knew so what to say to wind him up. Definitely. But, um, <laughs> he, I don't think he saw and that I punch coming. I think also RD. The thing I like about this scene is that you know RD was too smart. Really, he knew that that um, Corey was trying to bait him, mm. but he did it anyway because you get to punch him. <laughs> I think, Ar- I can't remember how it goes down afterwards because Dev, I think, later finds Ardy and Asher arguing about it. But I think that Dev's kind of pleased that he punched him as well <laughs> because yeah, he definitely. also doesn't like Asher going out with this horrible gross grow as well either. so um well done rd you have one punch of the year and i'm i'm just really really glad that rd's picked up his first conversation street award because uh since his recasting last year he's definitely been a favorite among the two of us and and many coronation street fans as well actually so um long may it continue that uh, that he's a feature in these end of year awards um and we have got an acceptance speech from adam as well got in touch with him and he was very pleased to hear about this one so um here's what he's got to say hi everyone thank you so much for nominating me for the Ecky Thump Award. It was really difficult filming this scene, as you can imagine, due to social distancing because of COVID. Um, however, I'm really happy with how it was portrayed in the final edit and that you as the audience enjoyed watching it as much as I loved filming it. Thank you again. Thank you, Adam. Really lovely to hear Thank from you. Thank you, Adam. Oh, I love Adam and Ardy so, so much. He's really, 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 really I nice I absolutely character. love Ardy. He's one of my favourite characters. Yeah, more, more Alahans in 2022, please. More. I know we said that for 2021, but we're even more. Even more and more doffs on the nose. Yes. <laughs> right, um, let's move on to our, I think this is going to be our penultimate ward of the night. <gasps> hey, you tell me, Gemma, there's nothing I like better than a right laugh. Do you like a right laugh? I prefer to have a laugh. (laughs) Well, this isn't about a laugh. This is about the laugh. This is the Right Laugh Award, where we award the funniest person on the cobbles of the past 12 months. And uh, this is always a great one. Coronation um, Street is so good at comedy characters. mm -hmm. And we love love to, to... To watch them. Well, there's all different types of comedy as well, and, and there are certain comedy characters that represent the wrong way, and other ones that will just have us laughing on the floor. So um, we we picked five here that were particularly we found funny um, to be our nominees for the past year, and uh, and you've been voting, and this was another very very close one actually, wasn't it? So our nominees this year were Dev, Evelyn, Emma, Ardy, and. Jenny. Now all of these are so hard to pick between mm. because not only are they funny, but they're also really lovable characters too. I think. Yeah, I, th- I would say so, and and also a lot of them have had. Uh, it's not just funny as well. All of them have had their various tragedies in the year as but well. If you think they've, back they've all shed to, a tear about something. Think back to like the very origins of Coronation Street and to like Hilda Ogden and how she was such a tragic, tragic yet comedic character. Mm. Um, Coronation Street can still carry that into the modern day and I think we definitely um, need to applaud them for continuing and also Ian McLeod as well for uh, making the comedy a focus of his tenure as producer yeah I think it's great that we've got two Alahans as the nominees here I say Alahans, that as, as if I didn't honestly, pick them myself but Alahans. <laughs> the Alahans have been such a brilliant family for the comedy the and the drama this year love them and, so and, much and Ardy just I'm going to change my name to Alahan <laughs> that's my first name Gemma no, just Alahan. Oh, fine. <laughs> I'm going to be like Madonna, but just Alahan. Yeah, um, yeah. Ardy <laughs> this year with his with his posh Chris and his and his relationship just with Dev so and brilliant. everything. Evelyn's been it's sort of always always good for. I a think laugh. almost it almost feels a shame. Like if all the categories are difficult to pick, and you feel as though you know some people were robbed. But this category, more than any, I feel like I could give this to all of them. Mm-hmm. And I think as well. Um, I don't know. A lot of the, these, a lot of the, the actors on Coronation Street aren't don't necessarily train as comedic actors as well, but they're still able to pull it off quite often as well. And it's a that's a, a rare talent. So um, enough beating about the bush. Let's find out who got the award, the Right Laugh Award for twenty twenty one in the Coronation Street Awards goes to Dev Alahan, Davindra, the winner. Congratulations! Incredibly close this one, but you got there. I'm really, yeah, really, really pleased. I'm so, was, so was this the closest one? Um, it may well have been. This yeah, the, the closest one. Yeah, about half a percent between Dev and um his nearest rival. But and we when we were looking at this on Saturday as well, um, 
I remember both of us when we saw the final result being so pleased with the result. Not that we didn't want the other person to win, but um, just being able to give Dev the credit that he definitely deserves after a fantastic year on Coronation Street. Um, I, I relish this because he's he's amazing. He's just this year has come into his own as the the ultimate cringy dad, hasn't he? Well, perhaps his finest comedy moment was the the drunken. Uh, tea party that he held where he could show Ardy that he knew the summer's surname was Spellman <laughs> and also to remind them to practice safe sex but to enjoy themselves at the same time. Yeah, him and, him and Billy were, were great in that scene. Really? Was, you know, Dev... not, was, uh, and uh, Ardy was hoping that another sinkhole would open underneath him exactly. at that point, I think. Dev's been a dad for, you know, a very long time now. How old are the twins? 17? Oh, 16, 17, yeah. So he's been a dad for a long time, but he really is coming into his own now. They're teenagers and he can be cringe dad. Yeah. He's always been cringe dad, but it's only that his power recently has been fully unleashed. Yeah, I mean, we've been watching some of his early episodes, children. haven't we, on, on classic Coronation Street. And he's always been a, a, a bit of a cheese ball, but now yeah. that he's got his kids to be embarrassed by him, I love it. It just makes it it's so 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 good. And, and the other one, obviously, this year that was that was great was when um he had his naked calendar shoot. Well, the, the shoot itself was quite funny when um De- was it Debbie walks in on him, I think. Um, and then was there he was... walking in on on Kev. Hmm? I don't know. No, no, no. I can't, I can't. No, somebody walked. I think somebody walked in on Kev. I can't remember. But uh, and then when the, the the picture comes through and it's Ardy that sees it, isn't it? And uh, it comes up on the computer screen and he he sees a particularly hairy kiwi, as Dev says, and uh, Ardy thinks it's his man berries. <laughs> and that that scene was so 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 good. The, the little tilting of the head to to see what it actually is. But I love that. There were so many scenes like that during the year. And um, he was—he wasn't just a cringy dad. He was also a, a cringy um, boyfriend or suitor as well. Because do you remember there was a very brief moment where he thought he—he uh, he was in there with Sharon, and this was when Sharon was trying to get into his house so that she could go on Ardy's games console That's to, right, yeah. to message. Um, who was he trying to message? It was thingy, wasn't it? It was Simon through there, and so she makes Dev thinks that. Um, she's that he's got a chance with her and he's like and Dev's like saying oh I've, I'm feeling a powerful connection here of mind and body <laughs> he's he's oh I love him how does he ever get the girl he, he although he's, he seems to be making um making headway with Bernie doesn't he they did have a kiss on Christmas day and there, there was that um brief thing earlier on this year where they end up in bed together for one night and um do you remember there was also the bit where he fancied Natasha for a bit as well and uh, Bernie makes out that Natasha's into him and saying he's got a good bum yeah. or something. And so he he, um, he he acts up to that. He's um so, so brilliant. He's and, a uh, ham. He really, really is. My in the best meet. possible way. Love him. Absolutely, Absolutely love him. Couldn't, couldn't. Him uh, fantastic. I, I thought it was Christmas come early when we had the scene with him and Billy uh, explaining <laughs> the, the joys of adulthood <laughs> they need to lean into that a lot more and the, because that, I, think I mean there's jo- the potential this year i don't know what's going on with Ardy because um, he, he pledged revenge and then now he seems to have given up he seems to have given up a little bit but I, i've got a feeling in 2022 we might see um that coming back again but i hope we don't lose the cringy dad scenes they don't go too much down the drama and the tears and the angst and everything because as, as good as they are at doing that the, the, the comedy is so so but good but I just want to give a bit of a shout out here to Ardy who is a new entry really as a comedic character mm. um, it's only very recently obviously with Adam Hussein taking over the role Yeah. Um, and I, I really honestly would love to see that get nurtured more mm. um, I do and what, putting him as a little should... Alan Sugar sort of figure yeah. wasn't it or Trying to be yeah. a little businessman. Poor is, Asher's is. the straight man of the Alahan family. She is, she? unfortunately, which is ironic <laughs> considering that she's going out with oh, Nina at the moment. Me. <laughs> uh, well love done, it, Dev. Love we Fantastic. love you. Fantastic. And also, um, we we didn't you didn't say this. I don't know if you did, didn't mm. say it for a reason, but Evelyn was the second place. Oh, very yes, Evelyn close, was half a percent. Yeah, very, very, very close. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we've not been able to get in touch with Jimmy to get a speech, but. Uh, that's my I'm lifelong sure ambition to see thank him you. to see him in real I life am and tell him how brilliant he is. Absolutely thrilled by this because it uh, I've always wanted to get this award. I'm sure, I'm sure he would. I did actually see him one time when I was in Media City and I, d- I think that was a time when I went to Manchester without you and he was there on his phone somewhere and I was like, Oh, it's Jimmy. Don't but I didn't I didn't go and disturb, I was very respectful, but I think I think if I was <laughs> to see him now I wouldn't be able him. to help myself and be like, Ah, you're Dev, you're hilarious. <laughs> 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 right, we have got we have got uh, one more voted award left to go this evening and then we have a, a final 
um, award that's very special as well. So um, next up, it's the next award. <laughs> Now it's time for our final voted award of the evening, the That's Champion Award yes, for the best storyline of the year. This is the this is the ultimate one, isn't it? The most prestigious, everybody wins kind of thing. Well, lots of people who are involved in the storyline wins, but it's the one that everybody wants. The big story of the year. What has had people talking the most? We have the nominees are Hate Crime, Leanne, Simon and Harvey, Tyrone and Fizz, Peter's Transplant, and Coronation Street. I realised from my, my my notes there that I didn't necessarily say what the story was for some of them. So Leanne, Simon and Harvey been all that drug stuff they were getting up to Naughty earlier drug. in the year. County Lines. County Lines, exactly. That's 2021 what it was, wasn't was it? the year we learned what County well, Lines exactly. mean. It teaches you Coronation Street things, doesn't it? Mm. Tyrone and Fizz's split and near reunion. And um, yeah, Peter's liver transplant. That was less than 12 months ago. It feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? That he was fallen on the floor all over the place and well, had his seizures. My memories of Peter's transplant storyline was most jigsaw puzzles and blankets which I think is indistinguishable from lockdown but you know what a lot of people like jigsaws and blankets especially at this time of the year so maybe that's maybe that influenced their decision their vote exactly well let's find out Gemma can I I announce this one so the winner of the 2021 last champion award on Conversation Street is of course the hate crime hate crime hate Yay. crime this is another massive landslide this uh, we've got an awful lot of the votes this one and um i think it was i would say a deserving winner of it i'm, I'm a little bit sad that the uh, the tyrone and fizz story which i did really really enjoy hasn't had any representation in the uh, in the winning categories this year but i still thought it was fab but yeah well, i think when i think back to 2021 the hate crime story I is think... going to be the one that that really um stands out I also lovers. think that this probably, I think, had the highest percentage of any category for the winner. Uh, I, th- I think that Jude might have got a little bit more in his That's right, actually. actually. Yeah, very, but very it was close. very close between the two. This was definitely, without doubt, hands down, everyone's favourite, apart from a, a small scattering of votes for So, So when people have been listening to this and everyone's been going, oh, I can't believe they win. What depth? But this one, hopefully more people will be saying, hooray, that's the one that I voted for. But... Yeah, definitely. Um, what, what a great story. I mean, I don't know what else there is to say at this point about this story. We we seem to have covered it quite well, haven't we? Well, there have been great uh, ramifications for this storyline and it's been handled very um, well by Coronation Street and the characters, you know. Um, not everybody's reacting in the most, uh, what's the word? Mm, self-preserving way. You know, people are going off the rails left, right and centre here. Mm. It's um, It's ruining lives even now. Yeah. And it's um it's definitely setting up uh some stories even for the next year I would imagine. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, we we talked a lot about the attack itself and how, and how fantastic Corey's been and, and Abby in this, but there have been some other characters as well that haven't got much of a shout out. So maybe this is the time for us to do that. We haven't really mentioned R Kelly yet, have we? Who's been no. a, a great little character this year. Well, um, yeah, very but, complex. Yeah, and she's definitely been the center of many spirited debates about. You know, who is she really to blame? And um, can she be forgiven? Yeah, and is um, Abby right to still try have a vendetta against her? Mm. And M- Millie Gibson has proved that she is a real strong young talent, isn't she? On the Curry well, cast, yeah, so definitely. it's no wonder the show wants to redeem no her and what, keep hold of her. You know, I've said quite a lot of things in the past about how I don't like D- Kelly, and I don't think that she should really be forgiven. I don't think she's been punished adequately. I think that um, she's been let off the hook. But I will say that Millie has played her so well Mm. um, that she is still managing to garner sympathy um, and she's very complex and it is down to the way that Millie's able to play her. Yeah. Very, very rich and nuanced and, um, you know, I, I, yeah, fantastic. I think she's doing a brilliant job and it's a testament to the the talents of all the characters in this storyline that it's been so powerful um, and you've also, I mean, we haven't even mentioned Sabine, Imran's oh, ex-wife. Oh, yeah. Well, Im- Imran and Sabine have both been key players at various points Honestly, of this story, this haven't they? Honestly, this has been great pulling Imran fab. in because we saw him shine in the Jeff and Yasmin story when actually his mm, scene um, in 2020 was probably the best, one of the best scenes of that storyline mm. where he was ripping into Jeff on the well, stand. Well, that was the scene that they showed. I can't remember which awards it was. In the awards ceremony. It was, um, was it, it was the was National so Television Awards. And they then, showed that as... Because Corey in the past 12 months. And they're still using 
um, Charlie DeMello's talents as Imran in this story when he was sort of, you know, defending the person that many people blamed and still still blame her for, for what happened. Mm. Um, and he manages to uh, sort of represent her with dignity and, and um, you know, a moral crusade, you know? Although I don't think Dev was too happy about how he tore Asher to shreds on the witness stand. No, but also, <laughs> I've got to say also that scene when... Um, Imran tells Dev, you know, I, I ha- I've got to do what I've got to do. And then he says, you haven't, I've just got started. Yeah, wait until you see that me against uh, Corey tomorrow. That was absolutely fantastic. I love that. What and, uh, a great and Sabine scene. was brilliant as well, wasn't she? I was very um, unsure when they announced that they were going to be bringing back that character. Oh, I don't really think they need that. And oh, isn't that a coincidence? It's his ex-wife that's going to be standing up against him in court and everything. But um, it's all for a bush up. I really grew to, to love her, actually. Fantastic. She was so so sneaky. And, uh, and also... Well, she was also just really powerful, wasn't she? Yeah. And I really like these characters who are thrown into a morally great situation and um she knew she knew about Corey but she was doing her job and it's just as important Mm. to represent the baddies as the goodies because you can't you've got to have a proper trial yeah I I I remember worrying that Imran and Sabine would um fall back together again and there were certainly hints that that would happen or or had happened wasn't there after the uh after the verdict came out but um but now i don't think we've seen her since then and it turned out that it was him and abby that got together and we're still seeing the ramifications of that now we're only only beginning i also need to give a shout out to to the social media team and the um press team at coronation street yes. for hate crime storyline for really supporting people through what could have been a bit of a traumatic kind of reenactment of many people's past bad experiences um they also did that really great little mini documentary yeah, where they had thing, um uh mini max um so that was Harriet involved, was I can't remember. Yeah, I, I can't remember. They got many of the younger actors who had been involved in this hate crime story and they did like a round table about about what they thought and Identity. it was really, really well presented and a really thoughtful addition to the story as, you know, like um a, a real world kind of discussion mm. about these these topics. Yeah. And I'm I'm really loving the fact that they've been on this and um, you know, sometimes we make fun of that at the end. Oh, if you're affected by this storyline, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's really important to acknowledge that Coronation Street does a lot of important work in supporting people to understand, you know, how, what they're going through and how they can get um, help if they need it. Mm. And sometimes just acknowledging on screen an, an, a topic that is might be taboo. Um, can be enough to help people understand themselves better yeah. and other people too. So a massive shout out to Coronation Street, press team, social media team and um, all the storylines and everybody for tackling things that can be difficult, really difficult to talk about, but opening those conversations. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not done yet either, is it? Because we've seen the long term effects that it's having on Nina and um, I, I Yes, think... Nina and her panic attacks. Yeah, um, yeah perhaps uh something it's going to be something that carries us year. into 2022 yeah for sure this year i mean yeah. <sighs> and with that Gemma, i think it is time to um move on to our final 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 non-voted for conversation street award should we do it i think we should and now it's time for our final final award of the night and this is not one that you'll have voted for but it is our uh, Madfra Award, which has been going a couple of years. And this is where we um, give a shout out to our listener of the year. We This is always a really difficult one to choose from because this is down to us, isn't it? But this is also in honour of Tivor, isn't it? Yes, it is. Our original gonna... Madfra um, uh, listener who would always write in and supported us right from the very beginning of our podcast. Yeah, lovely so this Diane. this is in tribute to Diane and... Um, Everybody also who listens to this and and supports us and um, is a uh, is a friend of the podcast. Yeah, and it seems yeah. like a an utter cliche to say as well, but we we couldn't do it without all our lovely listeners as well. You guys we support us so much. We so really much really do appreciate everybody. Um, but we've got one person that we we think about every year, don't we? Do, to give the Mad for it Award. Yeah, and I I, I um I announced that that's champion, Gemma. So I will. Uh, Pass over to you. Okay. Who's won our Mad for It Award in 2021? <laughs> right, the Mad for It Award winner this year is 
Nancy. <laughs> she is so supportive to us on social media and she writes in every week, doesn't she? She um, does. We absolutely love you, Nancy. Thank you so much for your support. Um, we, we've we made a... We've got... Um, writes on the Facebook group as yes. well, doesn't she? She always That's has right. lots to say on She's there. She's so lovely. And yeah. yeah, she, she has um, some very thoughtful feedback and... Um, we know that she very deeply is very passionate about not just the podcast, but also Coronation Street too. So thank you for your continued support, Nancy. We really do love you. And all of our um, previous winners, we, you only get to win it once. But you're in the Hall of Fame. Exactly. Now to be joined by Nancy. Well done. Thank and it's you. all to play for next year. Yeah, so who's if, it going to be next year? getting your name read out after a big old drum roll <laughs> next year. Then, so, but uh, there are so many people really who do. have been really nice to us in the last yeah, oh, we I know, really I know. do appreciate everybody. I know. Don't, and, feel, um, don't feel shunned. And thank you also <laughs> to everybody next, who is a patron of ours too, because I just want to give you guys a shout out because the Hate Crime Story won the That's Champion Award for the best storyline. And we also this year were able to donate our patron money for December to the Sophia Lancaster Foundation. We topped it up. So it's a nice round number, £250. Um, it's thanks to you guys and thanks to everybody that we we're able to put the show out and um, your support makes it yeah absolutely i mean that's why it's been going on for so long this is our 10th conversation street awards now and we are now in our 10th year of the podcast now we're into 2022 so this summer it's going to be 10th a whole decade since we first started and uh no, I mean, we had uh, we had some good stuff for our 500th episode uh, recently with Sue Devaney coming on the podcast. I've got no idea what we're going to do for, but for this summer. But no matter what it is, hopefully, I just want to say to everybody, um, thank you. No matter what you think of of um, Coronation Street, some some weeks people love it, some people hate it. You know, um, everybody likes it for a different reason, so you can't please everyone. Favorite characters. So I hope that this um, awards show has been a nice celebration of what's happened over the past twelve months. I hope and that some of I hope everybody got at least you know some winners that they picked as well. There wasn't anybody who didn't vote for any of the ones. <laughs> that, that won. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, I I would also I want to say obviously thank you to everyone who works on Coronation Street, the actors, the producer Ian McLeod. Um, the storyliners, the storyline team, the writers, the makeup artists, the set designers, the props department, the lighting people, everybody, everyone who's involved in Coronation Street. Um, Especially I hope the that ones you, that listen to the podcast. As I, hope well, that you know, I think you all know when we complain about it, it's from a place of love. We would defend it to the death if anyone else said anything mean about it. <laughs> um, we absolutely love you, Coronation Street. Thank you for entertaining us and all of our listeners and all of the viewers, millions of them around the world every year. Oh, it's not like this is a good speech, Joe. Are, oh, are you written this down or are you doing no, it from I'm just the heart? Doing, I'm not reading this. If anything, you can <laughs> yeah, see <I> that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You continue to amaze and impress us with your creativity and your good spirit. And we hope for more of the same in 2022 but um we, we know we don't always get it which is why also around this time of the year as well we do like to do our bobbins awards so we that, have a bobbins that's, award. that's going to be coming in january as well so i know a lot of you enjoy the uh when a we take a light-hearted a... rib takey uh, mick takey um we have to we have yeah. to it's our responsibility Look at some of the not so good bits of the year so that that's going to be coming this See, year as well and also um next week i think we'll be talking about our predictions for 2022 in coronation street and and uh, maybe a little bit more about some of the stories that didn't get a shout out that we still wanted to mention in our summer yes. of 2022 so if you've got any predictions or or summary bits of the year that you want us to uh, to read out in next week's show then do um write into us at conversation street at gmail.com and we will endeavor to read some of them out thank you very much for everybody for listening we're all part of win- one big cory community and family oh. and um that's why it's okay for us to be very complimentary but also very mean <laughs> it's allowed it's allowed yeah, it's so thank you everybody I hope that you're having a good year so far <laughs> yeah, it and... hasn't gone wrong so far three I mean it can then. only get better if it's gone bad already <laughs> so um, uh, come back for our normal episode which will be out the end, at the end of this of the week. week exactly yeah. it will see you next time ta for now <laughs>